Okay, I am ready to dungeons now. Oh, I gotta get my... Yep, there's my glass. Got my drink here. What are you drinking? I'm drinking sun-kissed orange, zero sugar, because it's caffeinated. I can't hear anybody. What do you mean you can't hear anybody? Can you not hear us on the stream, or can you not hear us here? Guess that answers the question. There we go. Back in. This is a this is a Christian Minecraft server. No swearing. Which is uh, not true. Okay, now we just have to wait for Rory to show up. If they ever show up, that is. Can you not move them from into here? What? Can you do you not have the server Discord magical powers to move them into this channel? No. Is that, is that how it works? No, I, I can't do that. They have to sign in. Oh boy, I can already feel my throat getting scratchy from this. I have a psychological. I spent all day like writing for this and writing for my other D&D game. I'm pretty nervous. I think I got it boiled down to a pretty simple set of a few encounters. I can't wait to die a thousand times because I only have eight hit points. That's not that few, uh, if I'm being honest here. You can send your doggy in to be a bad guy detective. I think Art has one hit point. Yeah, familiars usually have one hit point. It's not even a familiar. So if you, if Art dies, he's dead forever. It's just Which a dog. I, I asked if I could have a corgi with the, you know, with the assumption that it was going to be a familiar. Familiar is required a specific spell called yeah. Find Familiar, and you don't have that spell. But don't worry, if he dies, you can summon his ghost as a familiar if you get the spell Find Familiar. So that's, that's something, at least. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> this is gonna... We're gonna be in for a lot. Is Rory here? I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, hi, Rory. Hi. hi. Yeah. I'm here. So what? Ah, so everyone's here. Now we can begin real wombat hours D and D. Uh, everybody want to uh, introduce themselves? Ourselves or ourselves or ourselves? Uh, I just want to hear you guys introduce yourselves as players, and then I'll introduce myself as a DM. That seems right. And then we'll go down the list of players in counterclockwise formation. We're all in the same room right now. Totally. Yes, we're completely in the same room. We're all definitely on the same continent. This is definitely not being played at 9 p.m. at night my time. For weird reasons. <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, Logan. Uh, wh who are you, Logan? Uh, my name is Logan. I don't care what pronouns you refer to me as. Uh, I live in South Carolina, and for my job, I work on an ambulance. Cool. Rory, how about you? What's the deal with you? Uh, Rory, and um, uh, pronouns are like she, her, they, them. Whatever, I'm cool. And uh, I do comics sometimes. <laughs> cool. How about you, TN? Well, I am TN. Uh, I I stream on Twitch on the weekends, and I'm a graphic designer at an agency that I hate. And 
This is my first time playing a real life, you know, an actual D and D campaign. Oh, an actual D and D game. Yeah, I, I I spoke to Rory about my previous D and D like. My previous D&D experience was nowhere near what it was supposed to be, so yeah. Okay, then. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm Eric, uh, a.k.a. Erk the Turtle, the artist and illustrator, uh, the writer and illustrator of the comic Erk the Turtle, uh, found on Webtoons, and I'm here to D uh, DM for this group of people uh, from... We all met on a Discord server of a... Good friend of a good friend, and uh, yeah, we decided to play D and D together because we. I don't know really know why. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but you know, I guess that's why the real reason why everybody does anything. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, so let's get started. I guess I'm gonna go in the order left to right with these characters. I'm gonna set the scene a little bit of our story. Uh, and this is just going to be a little bit of time to get the characters to know each other and get to know the world a little bit. Uh, ben and Dante. Uh, that's going to be our first character. This what? game what? takes place on a world called Tecrian, a little desert planet in the corner of a star system known as the Boressa system, a tiny binary star system on the very frontiers of space, uh, far from the center of the authority. F uh, here the law uh, does not have as much of an iron grip on the people of this, of this world as it does have on other worlds, and the government doesn't have a large role. Despite, uh, you see, 2,000 years ago, there was a great cataclysm that swept through the entire galaxy. And this manifested in an unusual capacity, in that every world in the galaxy inhabited by people suffered a simultaneous yet independent apocalyptic event. Each apocalypse was utterly unique to that world, well, for, within reason. I won't ever say that no two worlds suffered a great flood, for example. Uh, Tecrian, before the... Are you for real? Okay, man, get out of my room. You take the banjo. Okay, so I will never say that no two worlds suffered a flood, for example. But before the Cataclysm, Tecrian was a city planet. And, uh... The city fell, and the glass decayed until the si the world was nothing but a scrap and sand-filled desert. Uh, ben and Dante, uh, uh, Logan, why don't you describe Ben and Dante a little bit? So, I kind of view him as if you're familiar with Castlevania, as like Trevor Belmont or Van Helsing from Van Helsing. That's how I kind of see him. Yeah. And what brings you to the planet Tecrian? So I'm trying to, that necromancy book, I'm trying to find a way to destroy it. And I figured, you know, this once powerful and mighty city might have the tools, resources, whatever I might need to destroy that book. Yeah, in a world like, in a world that had a whole city, you would think that they would have ways of dealing with those things on a massive yeah, yeah. scale. After all, you have to deal with those things when you have a city plan. You have to deal with the problems of being in the city. Are you for real, Mom? Get out of my room. I'm streaming right now. Okay. Oh, I'm putting on my slippers. Mom. Oh, God. Yeah, my mom and dad are here, okay? I'm not ashamed of that. Um, so, Ben and Dante, uh, you've not been able to find any way of destroying this necromantic book since you've got to this planet. But you have been able to track down some sort of amateur, uh, some sort of amateur who's been dabbling in the dark arts. And you're coming over like a, uh, a hill, and you found, you've tracked him down to his little hut. Uh, you, 
know that this guy is some sort of worshiper of the Star Eater. That's pretty common with these kind of amateurs. They tend to worship the Star Eater. It's uh, pretty late in the day. And you can see the green, there's a green light emanating, flickering from the sun. You can see through your binoculars that obviously there's some sort of unnatural shenanigans going on in there. What do you do? I didn't know I had my muted thing on. Um, I guess I'll walk up a little closer to the house and see what's going on. So as you approach this hut, it's a scrap hut, hastily constructed tent. Uh, and as you like peer inside, you see that this guy's drawn some sort of summoning circle, and he's just finished summoning some sort of abominable creature. Uh, you know from your experience these kind of creatures come from the nightmare, which is a realm of shadow and madness. What do you do? I guess I'll, since I'm a, my since it's my duty to destroy these people, I'm just gonna guess we'll be rolling initiative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's how this works: to roll initiative, I just have to make sure you're on the right layer. First, you click your token, and then uh, to get an idea of the size of the hut. One second. Uh, this is a better color. Get a size of the hut. Okay, yeah, this is coming through good on the stream, it looks like. Uh, how this works. You open your character sheet. Then first you open your character sheet. You find the initiative button. But when you press initiative, make sure you have your character clicked. Like your character token on the map. Does that make sense to you? I'll click initiative and see what happens. No, I must not have done something wrong. Uh, see, what you have to do, have to do is you have to click. You have to have your character token selected on the map. So you see your character token on there? Yep. Make sure you have the selection tool selected, which is the top. On the left sidebar, there's the top button. Make sure you have that selected. And you click your character token. You should be able to move them with the arrow keys now, or just move them however you want. And then you click initiative. I know, it seems a little complicated at first, but... Uh... Hey, you got it. Uh, we're going to take that initiative, and uh, this call... The first one or the second one? Uh, we're going to take the first one. I am a kind dungeon master. Never claim I am not. And I'm going to roll for the cultist now. And uh, his little creature will go on his turn just to simplify things. Uh, he sees you running into the... Uh, sees you running into the tent. And he can clearly recognize you as... Some sort of witch hunter. And he says, stop right there, witch hunter. And he pulls out a sword on you. He says, don't step any closer. My beast, my beast is deadly. His breath is poison. Take one step closer and you will be destroyed. Uh, what do you do in response? That's his turn. What do you do in response? Um... Let me think. I haven't played in a while. Um, let me see. I'm going to. I don't. You don't scare me. I've been trained for your kind. <laughs> Very <laughs> so good. So I'm gonna. I you know. I'm assuming my weapon's already drawn, and I'm assuming he can tell. But oh yeah, he said he knows I'm a witch hunter. So I'm gonna move forward, and I guess we're gonna engage in combat. All right. So. Uh... Just select whichever uh, weapon you want to, uh, whichever weapon you want to use, and uh, on your character sheet, just click it, and we'll see how this turns out. All righty then. What 
Boy. What do you mean, click on? Uh, in the on the first page of your character sheet. Uh, under, right under hit die. Yeah. Uh, or above it. I'm not sure if it's above it or below it. One second. Uh, first page. Yeah, it's right under hit die. Just click your weapon. Okay. Uh, so. Oh man, I forgot to reset that one second. So here's how uh, this works. We take the number on the left. If you don't have advantage or disadvantage. Uh, who? What are you trying okay. to hit? Are you trying to hit the horrible monster rat or the cultist? I want to go with the cultist. Uh, he manages to block the hit with his arm and deflect it. And it just... Bom uh, it, uh, and the attack is useless against him. Uh, now it's back to the cultist's turn, and the little rat is going to, the rat-like monster is going to attack you. It bites you in the leg, dealing one piercing damage, and, uh, the cultist now takes a, raises a short sword, and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to assume you do something like grab the sword... And just stop the head. It's a very blunt sword. This is not your first. Uh, this is not your first rodeo with this kind of small time cult. It's now it's back uh, and, to your turn. And I, when, I'm assuming you remember this, but I do have Mage Slayer as a feat. Yeah, he has not cast a spell yet. All right, then. I want to go for him again. Okay, so just roll your attack. Ah, that is definitely a hit. Yuppity doo da day. Now to roll for damage, you don't hit. Uh, you do not hit the uh, name of the of the damage on the weapon. This is where it gets weird. You have to go into the chat and you see where it says Warhammer one handed. Yeah. You click that name of the weapon and that will roll the damage. Nice. So that's six damage, which is ex a lot of damage. This guy, uh, you hit him really hard, and you just see him cough up a splatter of blood. And that's it, what you get for going against the gods. Uh, the little creature bites you again, digging its teeth in deeper than you uh, into you. You're, it's drawing more and more blood, and this cultist is going to try to hit you. Uh, failing, with you just deflecting it with your buckler, uh, this guy is not doing great in battle against you. This is right, an well, amateur at best. I'm tired of this rat. I want to hit it. Well, uh, I'm going to, uh, you can go ahead and roll the damage, but I'm going to tell you how to get, it's going to explode and die. Yeah, I figured the green was crit. Yep, uh, that's... Uh, go ahead and roll the damage. Wanna... So it explodes into a green mist, which uh, shocks the cultist and terrifies him. Uh, I point my... Just point my war hammer and I'm like, you're next. Uh, and you see him take out... A, uh, you see him take out a pendant that has a, a symbol of a wolf with a snake for a tongue on it. And he starts muttering something to him, some sort of incant, something to himself, some sort of incantation. Uh, and this is where your mage slayer thing comes in handy, where if they cast a spell, you can, uh, I believe, cast, uh, attack them as a reaction. Is that correct? Yes. Now, I believe they would probably uh, proc before they finish the spell. I think. I'll have to look that up later. So you can go ahead and use your reaction get an opportunity attack on them. Alrighty. That's three crits in a row, so... Uh, minimum damage would kill him. Uh, you knock him out cold. Now tell me, is Ben and Dante a merciful, a merciful pound? Are you going to watch? I'm going to him say out? yes. I I would like to say he's merciful. Okay. Now the Star Eater cult is very, very uh, 
illegal in the authority. Odds are there will be a bounty on this guy in town. Uh, uh, well, in that case, I'm going to use my manacles to bind him, and I'm going to cut a piece of cloth and use it to put over his mouth so he can't cast any spells or anything like that. Very smart. Uh, you pick him up, and you take him back to your bike and throw him back, uh, over the back of your bike. Do you... Uh, go through his. Uh, do you go through his pockets or anything like that? Um, I want to go through his pockets as well as through his little hut or tent. See if I can find any, you know, dark art books or anything like that to be destroyed or handed in as evidence. Uh, you know, just the typical texts of these sort of uh, of the sort of people. Uh, treaties on nothing. Nothing special. Just the stereotypical stuff. Yeah, just the stereotypical stuff, the kind of stuff you would typically find in the 14 to 15-year-old edgelords that tend to join this cult. Uh, you do find one thing in particular, though, uh, when rifling through his pockets, you find, first off, yeah, you find six gold. That's nice. Uh, but you also find... Uh, you find a flyer. Uh, and this flyer reads, A new opportunity. I have found a, the location of a pre-cataclysm ship in my travels, and I am looking for a group of brave adventurers to help retrieve this ship. All who help will be offered a position on the crew, and at the very least a share of the profits from selling whatever they may find on the ship. All who wish to join me, contact me at the following number at your local courier, and it's got a pin number after that. It says applicants receive 50 credit, uh, gold credits up front for the job. Gold credits, you know, being the standard currency in the authority. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, that's a pretty interesting opportunity because 50 credits up front is a lot of money just for agreeing to a job. So make of that what you will. Uh... And now uh, we're gonna cut over to another one of our, another one of our adventurers, uh, Parnassus. Oh no, Rory, it's your turn. Yeah, I hope you know you. Uh, do you know you're muted? Hi, I'm here. <laughs> okay, uh, Parnassus. Uh, so Parnassus, a meek, tiny little halfling in a flamboyant outfit trudges through the endless deserts of Tecrian, slowly dying of thirst, heading towards the lights of the town they can see in the distance. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Parnassus had a bit of a problem. Uh, your band that you were in had a bit of a, had a show, had a party out here in the deserts with the local teens, uh, teens and young adults, and, uh, when you guys packed up, uh, packed up in the morning, uh, somebody pulled, uh, one of your bandmates pulled a sneaky on you and said, hey, look over there, and pushed you off the loading ramp of the ship, le leaving you in the desert. How do you feel about this? How does that feel, Parnassus? I'm just gonna say... I made a conscious decision to be solo. Yes, uh, this was all intended. Everything is going perfectly for Parnassus. Nothing bad is going to happen to Parnassus. You're going to get to town in time. Uh, and that's when you see a Parnassus. A giant cockroach coming between two sand dunes it just stares at you. Oh my god, no. It's just staring right at you. See, I gotta see what map I left you on. Ah, there you are. Uh, okay, uh, just, uh, what does Parnassus do at the sight of this giant, disgusting, horrible cockroach? I'm just shaking my head, man. Like, this cannot be happening today, bro. Oh, but why can't it be happening today? It's just a bug. Uh, and it looks hungry. 
and uh, that's when. Oh look, another one's shown up. Fuck me. <laughs> and another one. Oh no. It seems you're pretty hungry. Uh, roll for initiative, Parnassus. Would you be so kind? Okay, I gotta uh, click on my token. Yeah, you click on your token and make sure you have it selected. You'll know when there's a little box around it. And then you roll for initiative. Okay. I'm gonna... I have to move first and then roll for initiative? Uh, you don't have to move. You just have to uh, click your character token and then roll. And select... Oh, oh God! I'm <laughs> sorry. Get back to where you were. There you okay, go. there it is. Okay, now I click on which one of the bubbles? Uh, none of the bubbles. You go to your, you have to open your character sheet, find the initiative, which is okay. directly in the center at the very top, and you just click the word initiative, and it should roll. Should oh, being the word. So I click on it. Yeah. Right click. Uh, I don't know what is right or oh, left. Okay. Okay, there. Hey, it okay. worked. Uh, okay, uh, uh, but the cockroaches are faster than you. Oh, no. And you just hear their skittering <laughs> legs come running up to you, screaming at the top of their little cockroach lungs, which they do have because these are giant cockroaches and not normal cockroaches. And all three of them are going to get a little bite on you. What's your armor class? Oh, no. My armor class is light armor. Uh, your armor class would be uh, your leather armor, I believe you have for being a bard, plus your, uh, that would be 16. You have 16 AC. Uh, only one of the cockroaches manages to get a bite in on you, and you take one damage. Oh, no. Pardon is you're being swarmed by giant cockroaches. They're disgusting, horrible little Covered creatures that live and eat in garbage. Oh my god, yeah. It's like you wanted so to, you wanted to play somebody with vanity, and I'm just like, oh I know what I have to do. Okay. I'm gonna think here. I need to think. I need to get these disgusting bugs out of me. Off of me. Um let me see. I can I use um, Thunder Wave to like get them off. <laughs> uh, Thunder Wave, you could get two of them. Uh, Thunder Wave is essentially this square going outward from yourself. Uh, it can be are these two, or oh God, I these two, or these two. You gotta pick. Choose I'm wisely. Gonna pick, I'm gonna pick the two on the right first, so that then I can do something one on one with this one. I'm gonna be one v one the other one. Tell me what's it look what it looks like when you cast Thunder Wave. You're a bard, after all. You gotta do that weird magic. Okay, so I flip my hair to the side. And then I take out my loot, which I've been carrying for a minute now in the desert. I tune it up a little bit just to make sure. <coughs> and then I crack on it. Like, uh, now, uh, click your Thunder Wave. Let's see how much damage it does. Okay. Let me go ahead and click on that inside. Okay, Thunder Wave. Uh, even if they succeed their constitution saves, which they will... Hmm, let's see. Nope, they do not succeed their constitution <laughs> saves. Uh, both of these cockroaches 
explode into a rain of viscera and green cockroach guts, which, contrary to all logic, are now covering you head to toe. Oh, no. You are... But at least you get a source of hydration now out in the desert. Uh, one cockroach left, uh, ever the determined to bite you, the lands a 17 and does zero damage against you somehow. So this cockroach yeah. just comes flying full speed right at your head and just bonks you and falls on its back. Parnassus, you're up again. I'm so annoyed right now. You should be. Not the face. Not the face. Let me go ahead and see. Okay, in this one, I'm going to take... Um, I have a rapier, right? Yes, you do. Okay. I'm going to take out my rapier in this time. And I'm going to try to decapitate it. You can certainly try. Roll that rapier. That would, I believe that would be in the center. Just ah, That's a hit. Now, as stated, it's in the chat. You have to click the name of the weapon in the chat window. I don't know why it is that way. It just is. And uh, rather than decapitate it, you just sort of slice it down the middle. Barnassus, you are now standing in the desert covered in cockroach guts. What a life. <laughs> oh, it's it's wonderful. It's covered in cockroach guts. It's wonderful. Uh, what do you do now? Well, I'm just gonna like try to clean myself up as much as I can. Uh, you do do a deep, you do not do too good of a job of it. This stuff has gotten in deep, and uh, you haven't had anything to eat or drink in two days. Do uh, and town is you have no idea how far away it is because uh, you are not savvy in that. What do you do? Do you make a horrible decision here, or do you venture onwards towards town? I think I'm gonna venture onward a little bit. Parnassus, okay. you keep struggling and struggling and struggling through the desert until you land in a small town with a sign that says Blue Harbor above the uh, above the entry to the central building. Uh, and uh, you find, like, a public... You find, like, a public hose that's, like, used to spray... Uh, to fill feeding troughs. You just... I'm going to presume... You just... Spray yourself with it for, just to get some of the cockroach grime and disgusting yeah, stuff like off. Brushing it off my hair, because that cannot be. So uh, as you are doing this, uh, you see a sign on a nearby wall that has the same flyer Ben and Dante found. And uh, 50 credits sounds like a good idea right now. 50 credits sounds like an amazing idea because you ain't got no, you ain't got any money. I have no money. I'm so broke. I am so upset. <laughs> $50 for helping some, for promising to help some guy? That's a good deal. 50 gold That's credits. Very good deal. Very good deal. Oh, yeah. Uh, now for our last but not least, Salakas. Uh, Salakas. Uh, I can never get the pronunciation right. Uh, Tien, want to help you out here? Salakas. Salakas. You know, uh, uh, Salakas, uh, you are right now tending your shop. Uh, and a man walks into your shop. You, you run a small general store in the town of Blue Harbor. And a man walks into your shop. And this man is a very unusual man. He has very pale skin. And uh, the whites of his eyes are jet black. Uh, he's got his hair back in a ponytail. And he's wearing all black in the middle of the desert like a lunatic. 
Don't you mean the blacks of his eyes are all black? Well, the parts that would norm uh, be white in a human are black. I know, I couldn't resist. So uh, you're twinning right now. And he has uh, white irises, normal black oh. pupils. Uh, and he uh, walks up to you and says, Hello, is this a general store? Yeah, it is. Um, First, can I, can I like, can, can I take a look at this dude? Like, what's his, do I, can I tell his deal from just looking at him? Roll a lore check. Uh, not a lore, it would be a history check or an arcana check. All right. Uh, okay, then I will go with arcana, because that one's better. Uh, I got a 20. Uh, you know, now this is a truly bizarre sight. This man's a Genasi. Oh. Uh, the, uh, an air Genasi. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> and you've never, uh, you never see these people. Uh, these people are incredibly rare because they typically live in a nomadic lifestyle above great ships. Uh, of mysterious build that, and they, their civilization is typically known as the Travelers. That's what most people call them, and it's what they call themselves. The only and, other Genasi that I've seen has been a fire Genasi back on Trot that left almost immediately. Mm. Yeah, so, did you say that to him? He says, uh, they can be picky. Uh, <clears throat> I'm in need of a little bit of funding. And he puts down a wand on the, on the counter. He says, uh, how much would you give me for this wand? Can you repeat that? You're, it cut out for a second. <coughs> Sorry? Okay. He uh, is like, I'm in need of a bit of money. Uh, do you take trade-ins or pawns? Uh, do you allow for the pawning of goods at your store? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, wh what do you got? He places a very beautifully made wand on your countertop. Uh, he wipes it off, makes sure it's clean. He's like, uh, it's an exquisite wand of uh, Traveler Mick. Uh... How much would you give me for it? Before before that, how, what can I like? May I ask why why you're why you decided to sell? Hmm. I've come into possession of a new one, and I need the money. It is simply uh, no longer necessary to have it in my life. All right, I, and uh, I go and I go and grab it. I'll take a look at it. Beautiful black wand. Uh, you can tell it's comes. Uh, it's made with some of the weird metallurgical styles of the Genasi uh, and the Traveler civilization. Uh, it's got a skull-like uh, pommel on it. it. It looks high quality. How much would you pay for it? Well, for something like this, and I, 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 uh, I, I go into like a uh, a wand fighting stance, like a playing, like I I pretend that I'm in a wand fight right now. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, I'll. Uh, what are, What were you expecting? Well, not much, but. I am in a bit of a hurry, sir. Uh, How's ten? Ten gold? Seems like a fair bargain. Uh, you give him ten gold and he leaves the shop, and that's when you actually wake up. Because that was several months ago. And you've been oh. thinking about this wand ever since, and how it came into your life. And changed way more about your life than it should have. Because ever since you came into a possession of that wand, 
you've been manifesting magical powers that, frankly, you can't explain. Uh, you, uh, Art is uh, sitting at the foot of your bed, and he looks really sad at you. You can tell he he is upset at the dream. Uh, he's upset at the dreams you keep having about acquiring this wand. You can't shake the feeling that you were given this wand on purpose by this person, but there's no proof of that. I mean, uh, so what does the morning routine of Salcas look like? Well, uh, since I live right above my store, I uh, pretty much, um, my store opens at 9 a.m., so I pretty much sleep in until 7, and then uh, I just go through my normal routine of, like, taking a shower, brushing my teeth. Um, I feed Art, uh, for I feed Art breakfast, and then I just go down uh, to uh, the Dragonborn Diner to meet my my buddies my buddies in the dragonborn diner uh yes tell me about your buddy, buddies in the dragonborn diner oh well these these are the two the, uh, they're two people they're the owner and two owners it's uh quiet art quiet get it i get it i get it yeah and um, i can't shut my dogs up they're awful uh what are their names the the um the man's name is Neil Zarenand, um, Udo Udo Sierra, which I just shortened to Nile, um, because I cannot pronounce that for my life, um, and Gal Cal Harin, which is his wife, which I just call Gal, because it's weird having a nickname for one of them, only and not the other one. Now, anyway, you head uh, down to the draft the board diner, you. Uh, do you order up the usual, or do you even have a usual? Yeah, I order my usual of of uh, of my egg shaped waffles, <laughs> topped with a uh, topped with a hard boiled egg. Uh, they uh, slide you your meal, and uh, uh, Gail comes by and says, "How are you doing today, Gail?" Hi, like I, I just. As as good as this food is, it's it's been weird every single time that I come here that you serve food shaped like your children. Dragonborn I, uh, eggs aren't shaped like this. I guess I wouldn't know what dragonborn eggs are, and um, I I don't think I need to know what they are. So they're cool. perfectly okay. ovular. Pretty typical of reptiles, actually. I mean, I think I got some laying around here. Do you want to see them? No. Oh, why would you have that here? No, thank you. Please. <laughs> uh, because we're planning a family, and I don't think I think you're being very rude. You don't don't be judgmental, Sal. Okay. All right. And these are my babies we're talking about. Anyway, uh, that uh, wand thing still bothering you? Yeah, a bit. I think it's bothering Art more than it's bothering me. So well, I, I, I bring Art in here. He's uh, like they don't mind. Right they've given Art like a, they've given Art like a, a ba uh, plate of bacon. Which you know he's not supposed to have, and uh, she uh, refills your coffee, and she's like, "But uh, like you should just throw the darn thing away." I think. I mean, Hubs and I were talking about this, and they just say, right. "Did you though?" I mean, I I tossed it in the large uh, pile that's behind my store, and it appeared again, like. I, it's. I think it's cursed. Maybe I think it's. It, it might be cursed. Okay, you're sure you're not cursed? Because that's typically how curses. Is that how curses work? I ain't never seen a curse. 
Hmm. Who's the last person who saw you use magic around here? Uh, Constable. Constable knows a bit of magic. Uh, I heard 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 that Chunky Steve down in the in the Iron Force uses magic all the time. And then uh, then there's old Jimothy. Bro, why are you doing? Get out of my room while I'm streaming. <laughs> oh my god, old Jimothy uses uh, magic to calm the spiders down. Uh, I don't know. Magic ain't that weird. Uh, she refills her coffee, and uh, how does the rest of your day go from there out? Pretty much just go back to my uh, to my general store uh, and wait until the day ends. Okay, so it's the same customers. old typical day that you have, day in and day out. Uh, an old, a lady named Kesben comes in, complains that milk prices are too high and that she deserves a discount because she comes here every day to buy milk. She drinks a lot of milk and every day complains that she deserves a discount. Uh, then, later on, an old Jimothy shows up, an old orc, and uh, he's like, hey, Sal. What's up? He hands you a jar of spider whips. He's like, can I interest you in a jar of spider webs? Fresh harvested, super cheap. You know they're valuable. I mean, I have, I have, I have, I still have your previous like three or two. How many was it? Four. It was two jars uh, of spider webs. Two jars of spiders. Um, and people will buy them. You can use this to make all sorts of wonderful stuff. You know what? Um, you know what? I could probably I could probably use these as a as a security measure at some point. It's like, oh, thank you, thank you, Sal. Uh, uh, how much do you pay him for the spider webs? Uh, you know, last time I gave you. The first time I gave you 10 gold, because I thought, wow, Jar of Spiders. Uh, but then you did it again, and now you're doing it again. Um, so I'm probably I'm probably going to give you... Mom, I'm literally streaming right now. Please do not talk to me, Mom. Uh, okay. He says, uh, that's more than good enough. Thank you. And uh, he gives you the Jar of spider webs. Now you have three Jars of, spider, of Spiders webs. You have no idea what to do with these things. Okay. You're, not, you're no seems... Uh, you know, seamstress, just pointless, uh, gendered word, but okay, I don't know a better word. You're no weaver, but, uh, and the rest of your day just goes a little, uh, normal. Until late in the day, somebody, uh, walks by and puts a flyer up on your door. Uh, um, people do that all the time, but it's just like, huh. Sorry? Yeah, I... I go out, and they're already gone, right? Uh, Jimothy? Uh, the guy who put the flyer up the door? Yeah. yeah, they're long gone. I I yelled to no one in particular. I would like I would like a little bit of heads up, please. Um, and, you know, I'm there, so I read it anyway. Yeah, it's the same flyer that Ben and Dante and, uh, that, and, uh, Parnassus, uh, uh that Parnassus and Ben and Dante found. But you don't need the money. Yeah, it's just leave. I mean, I'm pretty sure you just think to yourself, I'll just leave it on the door. Some Somebody else could use that more than you. You run a shop, right? You don't need that money. Uh, they're, 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 they're trying to find a, uh, a pre-cataclysm ship. Yeah. Or at least they, they, they claim to have found it. Yeah. I, mean, could, I, I could loot that stuff. I, I could I could get so much out of that. I could loot the hell out of that ship. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just posted in chat exactly what it says. Uh, in the location of a pre cataclysm ship in my travels, and I'm looking for a group brave enough to retrieve the ship. Yeah, and... Uh, 50 gold, and, and plus anything I could loot off of that ship. Would... Uh, would 
would win me so many favors from Leviathan. Yeah, it would. Uh, but I'm going to presume you leave it on the door for now because you still have the rest of your workday to get through. And then late in the workday, uh, two guys in like leather Desert Raider gear come walking by the shop. And one of them takes out a baseball bat and busts through the front door, breaking the glass on the front door, sending glass shattering. And two of them just walk through. One of them pulls out a gun. And uh, says, for a yes, for a I can pause, pause for, for a second. second. I need to look up my spells. Okay, here I am. Got it. Continue. And uh, one of them says, uh, <clears throat> they look, uh, one's pretty tall, one's a little short on the short end. And uh, says, uh, uh, me and Samantha in here. We're going to take a bunch of shit from your shop, and uh, you're going to give me all the cash you got on you, and everything you got in the in the register, pal. He points a gun at you. Don't try anything. You going to try some shit? I say all right. Um, I open the. I open the reg. Oh wait, okay. We gotta roll initiative, I guess. Yes, just uh, just gonna open the register. I I'm gonna open the register, and minor illusion it to be empty, and just say, go ahead, take what you want. Uh, do you have? Now be honest with me. Do you have? Uh, does Minor Illusion have verbal or somatic components? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to roll an insight for uh, Samantha in here. Uh, roll a deception check. What do you say? Uh, oh, roll a... Uh, just roll a d20 and add your spellcasting modifier. We're, we're going to do a contested check here. Uh, you said deception? Uh... We're going to use your spellcasting modifier instead, I've decided. Actually, I think this would be... Uh, yeah, just roll... Oh, don't worry about it. Just uh, roll a d20 and add your spellcasting modifier. I keep changing my mind. Minor Illusion doesn't have great rules for this. Where is it? <laughs> well, to roll just a flat d20, it's the little die on the... The left side of the screen, you'll see a D, uh, dice. Yeah, but, uh, like, where is, um... On the... the Spellcasting modifier. It's on... Is it charisma? It's on spells, and it's a very, it's a very top. So spell attack bonus is your spellcasting modifier. So that would oh, be shit. a plus six. So it's a D20 okay. plus six. I got 23. And he says, damn it. And uh, what, one of them says, ah, whatever. We'll just take what you got in your pockets. And uh, he's going to... And you can see he's getting ready to fire his gun. But you rolled higher on your initiative. What are you going to do? As this guy's got his hand on the trigger and is pulling it back. You're mere seconds away from getting shot by this man. They are five. Does the counter count as, like, terrain? Uh, it would just be difficult terrain. You wouldn't have to perform a check. You could just go over it. Okay, so it's... They're 15 feet away. Or 20. 15 or 20 feet away. Five... 10, 15, 20. It would be 20 feet away. Oh, my goodness. Okay, then. I guess I'm gonna... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Are you gonna Eldritch Blast? I No, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Which one are you Eldritch Blasting? Um... <sighs> The uh, one with a gun, I guess. I didn't mean to do that, but I guess it's... Uh, it's wild. fine, it's fine. Uh, you get... What are you actually going to do, for real? I mean, now would be... Personally, I have a recommendation. Now would be a good time to bust out a spell. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, 
Oh man, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how much shenanigans you're gonna allow. Because oh, what trust I want me. to do, what I want to do, is I would like to use Mage Hand to smack the gun towards the other guy. Uh, let me say this. Uh, I would be in your best storytelling interest to cast something like Magic Missile or another leveled spell right now. For oh storytelling God. reasons. God damn it, I keep clicking these things thinking they're going to open up. Um, yeah, I'm going to do uh, Chaos Bolt. Okay, I'll roll with the hit for your with your chaos. Oh. Uh, which one are you hitting? The one with the gun. Uh, this one then. Uh, yeah. Roll for the damage. I uh, don't. Uh, you to... see the name Chaos Bolt and the. Uh, you yeah, hit. But I don't. So this, when I click on the when I click on the name, it won't roll the it, damage. Uh... It rolls like the if I hit or not. Also, like the action armor class and everything. Um, you rolled a seventeen to hit. That's way above their armor class. Oh. Okay. Oh, I thought that was a damage. Okay then. Uh, you have to roll the name. Uh, you have to click the name of the of the attack or weapon in the chat to get the damage. Uh, four, uh, uh, 16 damage. Uh, you blow them away. Now, something amazing happens in this moment that's never happened before to you before as you've been well, learning and practicing magic. Uh, wild magic search. Wild magic search. Wild you magic roll search. on the ma wild magic search table. We're going to get our first one in. 1D100, right? And now we got to get Art in here to see if Art dies. Uh, one D one hundred, and this is plus nothing. Roll. I got an eighty-seven. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't remember what that was. <laughs> uh, magic, green magic ripples outward from you. And surges around you and spikes right into Art's eyes. And you see him explode with green, beautiful magic as he floats up into the air. And uh, that one raider is now dead. And uh, Art, having rolled so high on his initiative, he will take his turn now. You just see Art fly up into the air, now flying like a lunatic dog. Fly over here and bite this man. Try to bite this man in the face. Uh, your dog is flying a lot around now, biting this guy in the face. Uh, the raider's going, What the hell? And the living raider's going, What the hell? Why is the dog flying? He's going to take a swipe at. He's going to take a swipe at Art. Oh my god. Uh. And that doesn't hit. Art just dodges out of the way, flying around this guy in circles, barking at him. How does Art have a higher armor class than I do? <laughs> he's got a 13 armor class. I don't know. Uh, he's just barking at him at increasing speeds, flying around him in circles. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do Sal next because uh, Art just had his turn. I'm just like, yeah, they told me not to feed you bacon, but I knew it was a good idea. Uh, what do you do? Uh, and for this dude, I'm going to... Uh, da, 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 da. Art could have just gonna... died just now, by the way. I just let I everybody know at this table. Damn it. Okay, uh, you got to roll gonna... for... 3d4, and that's 3d4 plus 3 on this guy. Plus you have to roll for a... What was that? I don't know why I didn't do Magic Missile to begin with. It could have hit both of them at the same time. Yeah. Uh, just roll for 3d4. Uh, and you're also going to have to roll for Wild Magic Surge. Now we're using the variant... We're using the homebrew rule, where Wild Magic Surge increases each time. Uh... 
So uh, roll for wild magic surge. Your surge threshold is zero, uh, one right now. So first damage, then wild magic. Okay, so it's 3d4 plus one. One for each bolt. So plus three. Yep. And he can't do anything about that. He's a desert raider. Nine. Uh, yeah, he's still standing. Uh, now Art's going to take his attack. Uh, and he's... Uh, he's latched onto the jugular of this desert raider. Uh, roll for wild magic, by the way. Oh, right. Uh... If you hit a nat one this time, it will be another wild magic surge. 17. Okay, uh, it goes up. Your wild magic surge threshold goes up to two. I added a ticker on your character sheet that'll make it easy for you to tick that up. It's uh, on your core page, and uh, it's under surge threshold on the right I pillar. Have, I only have arts. <laughs> Sorry. I only have arts uh, thing open right now. Yeah. Uh, Art bit and did one damage to this guy, but he's still standing. Now this guy's going to attempt to hit Art uh, again with his rusty oh, short sword. And he misses because... This is a flying corgi, and he doesn't know how to deal with that. So this guy is bleeding profusely, slashing the sword in the air, rusty old sword in the air, at your flying corgi. You have to do something quick, or you're going to be in for a hell of a vet bill. Just go with a Chaos Bolt again. Uh, do you have any spell slots left? Yeah, I have two. Uh... That's not possible. You've already cast two leveled spells. Oh, goddamn. Okay, then. I thought Chaos Bolt was a cantrip. I'll do nope. Eldritch Blast. Uh, I've also, I also haven't been moving at all. That's fine. You don't need to move. Uh, Within range, range deck spell against target. One hit. On, one D10. Okay. Yeah. And that's just all you have to do is click... Go to the core and see in the middle pillar, there's a uh, Eldritch Blast in there. All you have to do is click Eldritch Blast. Oh my god. Uh, that doesn't hit, and now the raider's going to attempt to hit. Uh, I'm sorry, at some point his luck is good. You have to hurry because at some point Art's luck is going to run out, and it just did. And Art takes... Three slashing damage. Uh, and Art is downed. And he's bleeding profusely. And he's hit the ground. here. Ah! Uh, now I'm going to make a... Uh, behind the scenes, I'm going to do death saving throws for Art. Uh, you don't get to see this. Oh no. Um, <coughs> Sale, you, you got to save Art. Your doggo. What do you oh, do? Uh, boy. I guess I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move next to this dude and cast Shocking Blast, Shocking Grasp. Uh, that hits. Dope. Uh, so you just grab this guy's head. Minimum damage would kill him. He was at one HP, and uh. He's on the ground dead, bleeding uh, dead. Um, and and uh, make a medicine check for Art. Unfortunately, you can't. You already did your action this turn. So uh, Art is going to get another death saving throw before. Uh, we were rolling. Yeah, it was his turn after yours we were rolling. So, uh, oh, God, Art's looking really bad. Uh, what do you do? here and try and stabilize him. Now, you have a healer's kit in your inventory with 19 uses, if you recall. And a healer's kit auto-stabilizes a target without the need for a roll. Rory, I can hear the feedback in the, in the great distance. 
Uh, oh, you know, like, I'm, like, super anxious for art. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, do you use a healer's kit usage to stabilize art to Corky? I will. I just don't know where it is. It's oh, at the it very is. bottom. And uh, you stabilize him, and he's whimpering and crying. And you can tell it's going to be a vet bell in your near future. Uh, he's not doing great. Uh, and that's when the constables show up. And uh, they take your statement. And uh, they retrieve the corpses of these guys. They take the security camera footage. And uh, it's three, it's three uh, town guard, two iron defenders. And they, uh, they say, sorry, we couldn't get here sooner. And uh, you're sweeping up uh, late at night. You're sweeping up. Uh, Are you mopping up. I'm mopping up all the blood. On you're the mopping ground? up all the blood. You're sweeping up all the glass, and you see that flyer again. Uh, the man that caught that fifty gold would help pay for a new front door at the very least. I'll sell you that. Uh, so. Uh, that's where we're going to go back to everybody else, huh? I'm going to assume that each of you is going to decide for your own reasons to head to the dine uh to contact this man in this uh in this pamphlet and this flyer that you found and uh try to take the job, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go to the bar cuz I'm starving, man. I've been in the There's desert for no the bar in the town. Oh my god, that sucks. There's no Where do you bar. Get, your meals? They get them at two. There's two diners in town, though. How how far is Parnassus from the general store? Uh, Parnassus is. I'm going to presume just south of the uh, uh, on the exact opposite side of town from the general store, but not that far. Okay, is the is the Dragonborn Cafe like close? Yeah, I mean it's it's across it's from the map we saw it's across the um, it's across the general store. Then I'd be down to go there because like <laughs> for real I need to get some food in my belly. Yeah, you went to the Dragonborn Diner. You got a nice meal. Over the next day. Each of you headed towards the courier. You called the PIN number at their local... Uh, they're not pay phones so much as they are just public use phones, which is so gross. And this guy gave you instructions on when to meet him at a local diner called... What the hell was a local diner? A Dragonborn Diner? No, it was... <laughs> Another like, if there's another diner other than the Dragonborn Diner, I'm gonna have to be undercover. <laughs> Gort and Greshnos, which is a diner directly across from the Dragonborn Diner. Oh God! <laughs> they will 100% see you entering Gort and Greshnos. So the three of you begin heading towards Gorton Greshnos. Um, then you see I mean, I each could, other. I could minor illusion my horns to go away. And it could just be some other guy with red skin walking into this other diner. Roll a <laughs> stealth check to try to not be noticed as you are going into the diner. A stealth check. Oh my god, that's sincerity, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> oh my god. Ten. Oh, ten. And Gail rolls a... Five. You can see that she's like sweeping in front of the diner, looking out, and you just like slip on by and barely are not noticed. Okay. I'm not I'm not cheating on my diner, okay? Uh you kinda are. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 
I don't know how your buddies are gonna feel about that. So <laughs> you all arrive at Gorton at <laughs> Gorton Greshna's. You all see each other, and you see, yeah, it's not a very populated diner. Um, orc food has a bit of a reputation because orcs are native to Tecrian, and native Tecrian food can be a little alienating to some people. Uh, you all see a young man sitting in the corner booth, and uh, he looks like he's waiting for somebody. This guy matches the description of the person uh, you are all told to come and find. I go up to him and I say, hey, guy, you can choose a diner down the street. The better food. Hmm. Uh, I just needed a... Uh, do all of you approach this man? Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scope it out for a little bit. See if that's the actual guy. Uh, I guess oh, roll an insight. Yeah, yeah. I guess we didn't even check. Uh, do I roll one too? I mean, if you want to see if this is the guy. I do want to see if this is the guy. If I just like berated someone for no I'm reason. Gonna, I'm gonna roll insight because my character has learned to be mistrusting of everyone. I rolled a 14. <laughs> Where is, um... What do I have to uh, roll for? In your character sheet, you just click on insight. Yeah. Insight. Let me see. In the skill see. section, there's a word insight. You just click it. does it for you. Bada bing. Oh. Okay. I got two. Well... Sal, seems legit. All right. I'm just okay. going to go up and sit next to him or across from him, whatever. And ask him, I'm here for a job. I hear you're looking for crew members or whatever. Oh, by the way, Ben and Dante, um, when you turned in that cultist, you got a 20 credit uh, gold credit reward. Oh, man, I was kind of hoping he was still back there for comedic value and we all walked out. Uh, sorry to say, you got a 20 credit reward. Um, you all sit down across from this guy, and he, uh, he looks sad for him, and it's like, um, this all that showed up? What do you, all, dude, what? I got, I'm all you need, you don't need these two other losers, you just me, I'm just kidding, I didn't say that. Um, I got six phone call. I got six phone calls on my sat phone, and, uh, I thought a lot more would show up here. I'm like, hey. Work on your phrasing. I'm like, hey. I got this. I'm the guy that you need for this gig. Okay. Um. You will I'm never just... be so um, into somebody's music like you're going to be to mine, okay? So. You're not going to regret this. What kind of skills do you. To... Uh, what yeah. kind of skills do you three bring to the table? Well, I, I, I tell him that I'm a witch hunter. My family, I've all been witch hunters, and I, it's you won't have to worry about any evil doers or necromancers trying to foil his plans or you know destroying the ship once we get it. Uh, okay, uh, that would be helpful. Um, what about you, big guy? I have a. Uh, I have an eye for this stuff. I don't know if you saw the giant pile of shit that's behind the general store, uh, but that's a, that's a large pile of valuable shit. I know what to take. I know what you're looking for, and it's it wouldn't be my first time looting a shit. I'll tell you that. Okay, okay. Uh, and you, uh, and you, young sir. Sir, I will entertain your troops, okay? I have, like, the best set for this gig. You will not believe it. Other than play that... Wonderwall? I'm not gonna answer you, okay? That is not... <laughs> Can you... You can't play Wonderwall? Uh, what about bro. Freebird? Bro, you're killing me here. Can you Look. play Smoke on the Water? 
Uh, listen, I, I, I have a good set list, okay? I got a good set list. It's killer. It's bomb. Not basic. And other than that, I'm like tiny as fuck, bro. I can get literally anywhere. Okay. And I'm easy on the eyes. So I've got a witch hunter, a scrapper, and a musician on my crew right now, man. Oh, boy. I mean... Isn't isn't that what you need? A, like, aren't you looking for scrap on an abandoned ship? Uh, I'm looking to salvage the entire ship. The entire ship is worth more. We're talking about million dollar contracts if we can find a ship. That's what I'm good at. That's the whole thing. That's my whole. That's the whole deal. This isn't a game. I really. This isn't a lie. I really know where there's a ship. But kind of. About the forward payment, though. Well, he hands you all a pouch of gold. Oh, okay, okay. 50 okay. gold for each of you. Okay, seems fair. There's a lot more if you help me out here. Yummy. I'm still trying to do the math. Me as a me as a player, I can't. Me as a player, I'm trying to add fifty to whatever it is that I had left. But this, cool, yeah. We got I want to ask, how does he know for sure about this ship? Well, I figured somebody would ask that. A while back, I came across some interesting information. A, I found a hyperdrive for a ship. It was damaged, and uh, it had a black box on it, explaining that the hyperdrive was jettisoned from the ship because of a technical difficulty, and... According to the black box, the ship was undamaged, and the hyperdrive was marked for retrieval by its owner, and the owner of the ship was Nels Serechus, a dragonborn trader who lived before the Cataclysm. The data led me to this planet and to this region. The ship has to be somewhere in this region. That is for sure, if it exi if it still exists. I'm reasonably I certain somebody like this would still have their ship exist. Ask him who or where he's getting the funding for this project from, where the money's coming from. Uh, I've built up quite a little nest egg for myself over the years, and this is an investment of that money. And are you just going to sell it? Nope, I am not going to sell the ship. I have a friend in Teclan who, uh, I have a friend in Teclan who owns a garage. They're going to help me refurbish the ship, hyperdrive included, and we're going to get it flying again. And, uh, each of you will be offered a position on the crew, if you choose to take the position. Oh my god, this is my big break. This is it, this is it, this is all I need. Screw having a band. This is my solo. This is my moment. I, I don't need to I, explain I, to you how I'm valuable right. a ship of this <laughs> size, of a, a small scale, hyperdrive capable ship is. To most people. Not, sorry. I'm not going to make any promises now, but I do have a. I do own a store. I, I have. I, all, like, I don't. I may not look it, because I prefer not to look it, but. My, I have partnerships with the Leviathan. Like, you know, I don't. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I don't, I don't really need this position on the ship. I just want to get what's on the ship. Right. What percentage of the spoils do we keep, other than perma jobs? <laughs> that is determined. 
by what we actually find on the ship. But mm -hmm. I do know the ship was outfitted with weapons. If you decide not to, get on the crew. I'll give you the profit rights to one of the ship's weapons after it is, is removed it and sold. Thing? What was that? What was that mm -hmm. that you said? Oh, what, would it, what if we find nothing? If we find nothing? Yeah. 300 yeah. gold for each of you. Okay, it's still pretty decent. I'll cut my losses, sell the hyperdrive on its own, and we all walk away with this with a little extra money. And are we going straight to that place, or are we going to make pit stops along the way? Here is the thing. Here's the problem. I need the team to go out there, and uh, I don't know how to explain this. Um... Are you not coming with us? No, I have to head to Teclan and or start arranging for the ship. Uh, ships uh, re... Uh, for the ship's... Uh, not reconstruction, what's the word? Uh, revamp? Reception? Renovation? Renovation, that's the word. Um, see, here's the thing. I need to hire locals because uh, locals would know where to find. See, the only thing I know is that this uh, is where the region, this that the ship is in this region. So I need you guys to track down and try to figure out specifically where the ship is. Okay, that can be done. While this conversation is going on, I want to do an insight check to see if this dude's not a uh, some evil demon or something like. That. Go right ahead. I'm guessing I don't know. You don't know. I mean, there's no real way to know. Uh. So it's just gonna be us then on the ship. On the way to find the other ship? Uh, I don't have a ship. Y'all are gonna have to figure out transportation on your own, and you're gonna you're gonna have to figure out where to find the ship on your own. Uh, I have a truck. like I have a motorcycle. You'd be surprised how fast and all the amazing tricks I can do it. You want to see it? I'll take your guys' word for it. So, do we have a deal or not? The three of you find the ship. I'm going to acquire transportation to get that ship to Teclan. And, uh... Well, uh, I'll be in contact. You can can't, uh, you can get me on my PIN number for my, uh, for my satellite phone. If you need to contact me. Where are we going to find it? I, I could... That's why I hired locals. They would know where to find that kind of information, right? Oh, boy. I could try to pull some strings with my contacts and the life and for a ship, but I can't really promise anything. I mean, the ship is in this, the ship we're looking for is in this region. It's somewhere here. It has to be. There's nowhere else it could be. So you just need to figure out some information on the Dragonborn trader Nels Sarekis, and you can, uh, and you should be able to find the ship. Now, this is pre-cataclysm info, pre-cataclysm data that you're looking for. So, uh, do with that what you will. Do we have a deal or do we not? Sounds like a deal to me. He pulls out a contract and he's going to have each of you sign it. Do each of you sign this contract? Can I read it first? And, yeah. Okay, we're going to need insight checks around the table on this contract if you're going to... No. Oh. If we're going to... Can I, you know, considering that I've set up... Well, Logan got a 19 already, so... Or 20. 
Uh, go ahead and roll yours. Okay, but yeah, considering that I've set up my shop, I have deals with a Megacorp, and I buy and sell things on the reg. Can I roll this with advantage, considering that I should know the ins and outs of a contract by now? Nice advantage fishing, but no. <laughs> Sorry to say. It does suck. Oh, I just want to be, like, looking at this guy really sus. Because I'm, like, so upset about the no transportation bit. Uh, like, yeah. I've been walking forever. I'm so uh, tired of it. Ben and Dante, you're overlooking this contract. You are familiar with all sorts of infernal and abyssal deals. Creatures from the nightmare and the dreaming who... Creatures from the nightmare, the dreaming, and the hells who work out deals with mortals to further their own nefarious ends. You've seen contracts being burned in salted fires a dozen times over by your, uh, by your family. Uh, you're very, you as a child were allowed to burn a contract. You find nothing infernal or evil about this contract. It all seems to be, there's no sign of magical, uh, ma of magical nefarious aspects to this contract. You are not familiar with the legal patterns, but all of it is very plain language and it's very straightforward. It seems like this is all above board. No, all righty. I sign it, and, and uh, I believe Rory was saying something right as you started talking. Sorry about that, Rory. My bad. Oh, no. I'm still very sus about the guy. Ah. About the transportation bit. So I'm like, I'm sus, but I'm like just choosing to risk it. I'm highly sus of this dude, too, just because he's trying to, like, he... He mentioned that the, the ship had weapons, and I don't see any other, I don't see a reason why you would need a ship with, one, a hyper, like, with one, like, faster than light travel and weapons. Like, what are you planning to do? But well, I know mostly be we're probably not going to do that. Well, mostly a ship like that would be defending yourselves from space pirates. It's... Space whales and space octopi and spa and uh, other the such space things, you know. The shark plus the shark nados and uh, and God whales. help you if you go to a planet that has native rocks on it. Uh, you definitely need weapons for that. You say rocks or a rocks? Rocks, a R O C. Oh, okay. I know what you're saying. Uh. So do you all sign it? I do. I do. YOLO. <laughs> Literally. The pact is sailed. You are all dragged to hell instantly. I'm just kidding. No. I'm at home. <laughs> uh, everything seems fine and above board. He says, I'm going to take off now. Contact me on my sat phone. Will you find some information? So, uh, Hope to hear from you guys soon. What was that? Are we gonna get a text chain started? Oh, um, I guess. Um, I reckon are, so. Are we gonna? Are we gonna? Like, what are what are we using here? Like, WhatsApp or Slack? I think WhatsApp is too much. Uh, None of you have phones. Oh, then why did he give us a phone? For the public ones. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. The phones are available. The uh, phones are available through the courier office. Most places on TechRian do not have phones or landlines. I'm gonna try and figure out how we can get some transportation by like talking to people around the town. I'm gonna, least... try, I'm gonna try with the uh, with Lava, I think. I just kind of put my hand over on in the middle of my chest and kind of shake my head so my hair moves. I'm like, I have a motorcycle. We can use that for transportation. We have to go to space, guy. No, you don't. You do not have to go to space. When he's referring to this region, he's referring to this region on this planet, not to space. 
I complete. I I was always con- I always thought that this uh, ship was like somewhere in space, like in the middle. Of- no. Sorry like, about the misunderstanding. It's on this planet, and it's somewhere. Dude, then I can, I can just use my truck. Then fine. We have nothing like. Okay, I need to hit my drive. truck. <laughs> yeah, uh, you do have a truck. Uh, so that leaves the question of how. What is your going to be your plan of trying to acquire this data? Uh, well, what is your plan of going to be to try to investigate this ancient dragonborn, Nels Serakis? Uh, I'm literally going to go across the street. I have no idea. I, this is, I would assume this would be Serakis' uh, realm of expertise since he's the general store manager or whatever. General store owner, by the way. Put some respect to the name. I said manager. I thought that was the same. It's it's not. Um, uh, it is considering I, I also manage it, but I am the owner. <laughs> so, the colonel. Okay. Um, I'm going to sneak outside and then come back around to go back into the Dragonborn Titan. Do the rest of you follow him? <laughs> Sure. Follow outside. Yeah. You guys are now in the Dragonborn Diner. Sitting in a very similar but completely different diner. Nobody's serving giant ants on plates or uh, giant spider legs or giant crickets or a kebab made out of uh, horrible... What about giant cockroaches? Yeah, that's... Giant or- orcs do not eat giant cockroaches. Don't be silly. They eat normal stuff like giant ants. Uh, then I'm definitely going to pick something on the menu. So it's going to be one gold between all of you for your food at the Dragonborn Diner as Gail comes around bringing you guys your meals. How much gold do I have? Let me check. You should have 57, I believe. Okay, then, yeah. I'm going to have, like, something to eat and drink. Because I um, need to... Make sure you take it down in your inventory, uh, where the gold is. Uh... Oh, let me check it. Where is that? Well, I can, you know, as a, uh, as a, you know, get... Uh, consider this a, a business, a business, a uh, business meeting. I'll just I'll just cover it, I guess. It's not because it's like super nice. <laughs> um, you know, I'm. You're. What, what, what were they even called? I don't remember what the what Logan's race is. Asimar. I don't. Asimar. As, he just looks human. Yeah, I look human. So I'm a race, but I don't know that I'm not human. In other oh, words. Oh, okay. Um. But he did. He did mention that uh, he comes from a long line of witch hunters. Yes, and which, yes. And and that he uh, defeats the forces of evil and all that. Yeah. And I just have a really, a really strong mistrust of people who who say that just because like what is the definition of evil? Um. So like I'm 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 a little wary of him right now because. As a tiefling, I have been considered evil many times, and I just run a goddamn supermarket over there. Um, anyway. <clears throat> Is Gal around yet? Oh, uh, yeah. She's bringing you all your food. Um, I asked her if she can... Wait. I had a... I, I had popcorn, and it's, like, stuck in my throat right now. <laughs> I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask for their finest wine and finest steak. She comes around with a beer and just like those crappy, uh, crappy diner steaks. Dude, like a uh, cube steak, run. basically. Yeah. It's uh, best, best food, best food in the entire city. Oh, it is. That depends on your definition of food and city. I'm going to roll to see if it is the best food in the city. 
It is depends on your definition of food and city. I'm Fair saying, enough. I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying that to Benadotti in front of Gal, just so. Ah, uh, she says, you know, "Well, I well, thank you, sweetheart. I always appreciate your patronage." Yeah. Um. <clears throat> hey, Gal. Um. Yeah. Is is Neil around anywhere? Uh. Hey. Neil. Ah. What? Neil. Sam wants to talk to you. Okay. And he comes out from around the back. He's like, "Hey, Sam." Hey, Neil. What's up? Uh, same old, same old. Me and my wife are having some kids. That's what, that's that's gonna be great. I heard. Um, and I just, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for you know, foregoing the small talk. Uh, these are some people I just met. We're doing a job. Um, Hi. I'm looking for stuff for the general store, and yeah, the guy. We were hired by uh, asked us to figure out about Nell Serekian Serekis. Does that name mean anything to you? Uh, I knew I knew Serekis back on the ring. That was okay. nigh on twenty years ago. When oh, Can I still talk into telling us more? I mean. <laughs> It's not that weird of a Dragonborn name, but a typical Dragonborn. Do you do you do you know if he was like connected in any way to the? Uh, do you did he know anything about like a pre cataclysm ship? Do you know anyone who's been going off about that recently? I ain't like, heard any whispers of any rumors besides the typical people coming through saying, "I found a pre cataclysm ship. I'm gonna gather up a crew." Oh, don't tell me you three fell for us for one of those pyramid schemes. We're gonna, gonna where they come around saying we're gonna find a pre cataclysm ship, and we're going to make a billion dollars off contracts. I mean, even if we did, we I I, I feel like we ended up winning even if we did, uh, just because we haven't had to front the cost for anything and we all got fifty gold already. Uh, so. You know? Well, that's a hell of a scam if it is one. Just give you 50 gold and then we'll go away? Yep. <laughs> that so it doesn't sound like a scam. It sounds like a win. I mean, we scammed them, definitely. <sighs> You're um, looking for a guy named Nels Serectus from before the Cataclysm? Hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, You'd have to go talk to maybe some of the scrappers out, some of the salvagers out in the Iron Forest. They tend to know stuff about pre-cataclysm things since they're taking it apart. Uh, you go to the curio shop maybe and talk to... Maybe talk to the curio shop, maybe talk to Father up at the church. Uh... Um, where was this Nell Sarekis last seen, or where did you, when do you remember him last living? I mean, where, not when. What? Uh, I I don't know anybody named this, but you say he's pre-cataclysm. That's 2,000 years ago, son. Yeah. I thought he said he knew him. I knew a guy named Serechus back on the uh, on the ring. That was twenty years ago before I left home. That was y'all. If y'all want to go out to the ring, you're gonna have a good luck getting out to the ring. You have to get a connecting flight out of here to Kessa, and then you have to get your passport. Whew! Wouldn't wish that on anybody. Do you think there's anyone in the Leviathan chain who I could ask if they know one else or like it's... Uh, 
He scratches his chin. And he thinks about this for a moment. He's like, "Man, I'm not, like I'm, I'm not asking to like meet up with the Star Dragon or anything, but like, you know." Hmm. Says, "I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You could talk to the regional manager." I guess we could. I mean, I'll give you his pen. I should have it, right? Uh, guess... Yeah, you have the regional manager's pen. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, if you want... I don't know if he'd know anything local, but... Uh, I mean, it's worth a shot. If you want some local lore, though... You go to old Shark Tooth at the curio shop. They tend to know some stuff. Okay. And we got we got some leads, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. I think I'll check the curio shop. And are we gonna? Are, aren't you gonna eat? Yeah, but like after. Duh. Okay. Just sound like it was you're gonna do it right now. I know one other guy. I know one other guy. I just came to mind. Uh, you could talk to J uh, you could talk to Willis at the who he runs the stables and the vehicle store. He used to be a scrapper in his time. Uh, he he knows all about this place, all about this region. You know. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, I couldn't help more. More so. That's fine. That's great. We got some leads. We got we we're further than we were before. Hey, yep. if you fell for a scam, I'm sorry about that ahead of time. I will tell. Um, so, like, again, so far we haven't really had to pay anything, and we won 50 gold, so I, I think we scammed them. Good luck, pal. Thanks. Thank you. That's, that's I'll, I'll also take the usual, even though it is, like, the afternoon by now, probably. I'll take the usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he brings out your gadgets for... You eat up. Which leads are you guys going to investigate first? Um. I want to go curio shop, definitely. What's the curio shop? The one across the street. What does that mean? Uh. That means weird stuff. Yeah, curiosities. Oh, I've honestly never heard that word until just a couple of minutes ago, so I didn't Do know. Do you have, like, thrift? On the store, because I like my character would definitely like go in there. Okay, so to put it lightly, this is a magic shop, but they don't carry any magic items. They sell potions, they sell herbs, they sell all the kind of stuff you'd need for like spellcasting components. Okay. All that good stuff that you would need. Like this is the kind of store you go to when you're into magic. You buy like magical books and stuff, and it's got like. Mildly magical stuff. So, uh, okay. I can check if there's like stuff for my loot so I can like enchant it a bit. Does this guy know that I have a that I took a wand from someone? Have you talked to Shark Tooth about it? That's the owner of the curio shop, is Shark Tooth. I mean, after. After Why throwing it possible? away, after throwing it away, and then it appearing back without, you know, yeah, any, they would know. Explanation: I would, uh, I would definitely go there and ask them what the fuck is wrong with this. Uh, their explanation was it's magic. Great. Uh. So, are you guys each going to pursue a different lead? Yeah, I guess I can check out the church place and then do the vehicle since it's right next door. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to guess that uh, TN will then go check out. Who's TN? TN? Uh, I guess that means Sal will go check out, uh, go call the regional manager of Leviathan. Yep. Uh, I have to open a document about Leviathan. Give me a minute. Uh, give me a hot second here. Sir, yes, sir.
do, 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 do. Space Game 2000. Uh, okay, I got that open now. Uh, uh, you know, let's, just, let's go with Rory, uh, Rory slash Parnassus first. Rory, uh, Parnassus, you head across the street uh, to the curio shop. And uh, if you've ever entered any kind of shop at a mall, you know the kind, uh, I, I don't know if this is just an American thing. There's every mall in America, there's a shop just full of random garbage that Americans think is fascinating because it seems yeah. non-American. Uh, and it's kind of like that. But there's also walls and walls lined with all sorts, all manner of jars. It's like ground pig's, uh, ground and dried pig's eye, uh, blood, uh, uh, cockroach blood, uh, manticore brain, also, uh, you see a jar full of human teeth, even, and, uh, and then you see, like, this beaded curtain, and there's nobody at the counter. Uh, is there a bell I can ring? Yes, there's a little bell. You can just okay. you know exactly the kind of little bell that you have to ding. Yeah, I want to ding the bell three uh, times. Ding, 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 ding. Play um, all of all of Stairway to Heaven on that little bell. Uh, and uh, you see a woman with blue skin and uh, sharp teeth. Emerge from behind the beaded curtain. She's got long hair and uh, blue eyes. And uh, she says, how may I help you today? Hi, are you sharp too? Uh, she smiles and says, yes, I am. Hi, I'm Parnassus. Um, you may know me from a band I used to play in. I don't. Oh, okay. Um, well, you will know me. That's what's important. And um, I was looking around your store, lovely, by the way. Um, and also, I needed to ask you a couple of questions. Of course, that's uh, most of my job here is answering questions. Oh, that, oh that's cool. Um, let's see... And just to to check with you, Eric, um, what she knew something about um, the guy, Selic, what what was his name, the the Dragonborn? Nelsarekus. Nelsarekus. Uh, I'm gonna write that in the chat. Make sure that you guys. <laughs> uh, she uh she says I've never heard the name before. Hmm. Let me see. Does she know anything about the the crash on the ships and the usual jobs that we that that people ask around for that? Oh, oh, sweetie, did you fall for one of those nasty little schemes that people do where they say they found a pre-cataclysm ship? Can I persuade her into thinking that this is the real thing? Oh uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a persuasion check. Yeah, let me persuade her. Isn't your persuasion like plus eight or something? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how well I do on this. Wow. She says, maybe, maybe not. Time will tell. So why did you come to me? Um... Well, I was hearing around town that you may tell me a little bit more behind the rumors that people hear regarding that those types of jobs, specifically a, sh a certain ship around these regions. Hmm. In all my years here, I've never heard of anybody actually finding a ship in the blue around Blue Harbor. But, you know, most people wouldn't tell if they did. And keep that secret, but uh, if you're looking for somebody that came before the cataclysm, 
was living here right before the cataclysm. Mm -hmm. I guess you could access some pre-cataclysm computers and find some census data, maybe? Huh. But all that, the, all the government buildings are in the Screaming City. Oh, that's a little bit far. Well, the Screaming City's right over yonder. A little stranger, but, uh... Nobody goes to the Screaming City. For good reason. But how much... Uh, how... How far does Parnassus reach over the counter? Uh, not far. This lady definitely has to look over for the counter at Parnassus. And that's all I can really do to help you. Can I do inside and see if she's if she's hiding stuff from me? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Roll the 16. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this woman is hiding so much information from you on a cosmic scale of understanding. But nothing related to what you're asking. Oh, God. Well, was it that she knew that um they told us in the Dragonborn dinner? I'm gonna have to remember because uh, we're moving over. Uh, we're moving over to Sale right now. You're in the courier's office, and you just uh, signed in. You wrote down that you were using one of the phones on one of the books. And uh, you're now on the phone, waiting for the regional manager. And the region, and eventually, uh, the regional manager picks up and says, uh, "Hello." Uh, hello. Uh, hello. How may I help you today? Uh, this is. Dang it! Uh, there it is. Uh, dang it's a very interesting name. One second. I have to. With it. Good lord, uh. Sorry, uh, I. There it is, uh. What? Sorry about this, uh. Hello, this is Tetra, regional, regional ambassador to Kessa for Leviathan. How may I help you? Is Tessa? Tetra. Okay. Um, hi, this is uh, Sal from Sal's General Store. Oh, uh, may I, are you a uh, are you a registered member of Leviathan? I am. Oh, whew. we're pulling up your records now. We see that you had a break in. Is that correct? That is correct. Ah, oh. and uh, according to this. Um, you see, this puts your store at an unfortunate liability location. I'm sorry to say, uh, your guild dues are going to have to increase because of this. Uh, up to 15 credits a month. Uh, unless you relocate your shop or close down. Uh, I'm sorry to say this. Is this what you were calling for? Yes, actually. Um, I've been, I've been looking to relocate to um, another place on 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 the same planet, uh, but like somewhere that has. Like I understand that Leviathan has like a good, uh, 
sort of picture of the globe. They have satellites that can, you know, determine the topology of a planet. Yes, uh, Leviathan does own 15 satellites in orbit of Tecrian, which okay, we have okay. proudly used in service of telecommunications and geological surveys under licensing agreement with the authority. Fantastic. Uh, I was looking for a place that um, had, you know, because my, my my store. I don't I don't know if that's in the in the files. It should be. My store is like just the store itself, and then behind it, I have a scrapyard. Oh dear. Um. Uh, that that's is where. Yeah. Uh, you do have an empty lot on file. Uh, you have not registered it as a scrapyard. We will be sending you the paperwork for that. <sighs> Great. Um, I'm looking for another place on planet that um, has that sort of... Um, the space for that kind of setup. Uh, but, you know, something that's already kind of pre-built like something that already has like a little bit of a a base and metal maybe Oops. i don't know if your satellites could pick that up anywhere uh, i am unsure what you are asking for sir uh but you um i didn't say that i didn't say that to the lady on the phone i'm i'm just saying it out loud um This is a question to 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 Eric to Eric. Yes. Do you know what I'm trying to get at? No. <laughs> Crap. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to convince her to do a scan of the planet in guise of like I'm trying to disguise myself as um, yes I want to relocate I want to do all this to the store but I really want her to check the planet to see where the ship is. Like, if there's, like, some sort of blip of a large metallic structure somewhere, just, like, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um. So, she says, um, if you were looking for local resources or new building sites, we can, pro we can forward you our recent geological survey papers. And uh, satellite imagery. Would this that's... be helpful in your endeavors? That would be very helpful. Okay, we are faxing it to your location now. <laughs> and the fax machine attached to the phone takes about 15 minutes to spit out a, uh, a picture. Uh, several... <laughs> And me just over over all that noise. Uh, hold on, I don't want to scream into the microphone. And wouldn't it be useful if um, I could defend my own store by myself? Would that make my premiums go down at least a little bit? Uh, base. Uh, and this whole time, uh, Art is barking at the fat machine. <laughs> bark! 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 bark. I'm just trying to hold his mouth shut, but it's, it's not helping. Uh, and he's barking at the fax machine, and the fax machine is going off, and the, ma and the woman saying, uh, Sorry, we cannot help you lower your premiums. You'll have to apply for a new evaluation, which we can get to within three months. Cool. Like, will the application drive in three months, or will you get to the evaluation in three months? Uh, yes. What? Was that a yes to? Of course, sir. Of course, sir. We will be able to, within three months, get you the application for the evaluation. At which point, we will submit it to the subcommittee. Do you understand the process? Yeah. Then, after that, uh, it should take no less than two or three years 
to reduce your premiums, okay? All right. All right. This is like, I, I'm sorry to do this to you, but this is like the most corporate thing that will happen. They will raise your amount you have to pay, but make you go to hell and back to reduce that. I'm aware. <laughs> it's very, um, very corporate evil. Uh, but you do get well, the you do get the satellite images as well as geothermal images and uh, uh, some of the pre cataclysm uh, some pre cataclysm data even. Okay. That shows like city plans and so stuff that existed before the cataclysm. Which is very interesting data. Nice. Meanwhile, um, Ben and Dante, uh, I'm sorry to skip. That's team. me. Uh, you're heading to the church, and then you're going to go talk to Willis. Uh, yep. You head to the church, and uh, the doors open automatically, and you see a hologram that. Uh, what religion? The hologram is amorphous, and it scans you, and when it sees your holy symbol, it display uh, gets, confu uh, gets confused, and uh, it displays a symbol of something roughly similar to your religion. Okay. And do I... I just rolled religion knowledge. Do I know what religion this church is for? Uh, according to this hologram, it's your religion. Oh, Okay. I was confused by the description, what you were describing. This is like the most agnostic church you could possibly imagine. There's utterly barren of any semblance of any faith. Uh, except okay. for this hologram. It has no iconography. It has no angels. Uh, but it does have pews, and there is a man praying at an altar near the, I guess, back, or is it? Would you call it the back or the front of the church? The part near the near the part where pe the pastor does his speechifying. The altar. And yes. Stuff. And there's a man kneeling and praying there in uh, big, heavy robes. Okay, I'm going to walk up, see if there's some sort of on box and just like drop a coin in it just to be nice or whatever. And, and when this happens, the man stands and says... And he turns to you, and you see that this man's a robot. And he says, uh, Greetings. I, Bro, I'm in the middle of D&D. &D. I'm just looking. Greetings. I am Father M383P4XXXJT1874QMJ. I am fluent in over 2,000 legal faiths. Over, fluent in over 2,000 legal faiths. And I am ordained in the Church of the Law. How may I serve you today, sir? Hello, Father. My name is Ben and Dante, and I'm a witch hunter. I've heard some people mention a name, and I was wondering if you could tell me if this was a good-hearted, natured person. The name is Nels Therekis. <laughs> All who follow the law are good in the eyes of the gods. <laughs> Does that person follow the law then? Searching. There are no criminal records on file for Nels Serechus. Is there. Can you spare me any information you know of this person? There are no records on file for Nels Serechus. Alrighty then. How may I help you today, Ben and Dante? Um, um, are, have you ever heard any rumors of any ships or pre cataclysmic ships on the planet? Not a day goes by where I do not hear of the things that the scrappers and the salvagers talk about out in the wastes. All of their lost hopes and dreams that slowly drive them mad as they search the wastes for their holy grail that will... Once and for all, free them of their torment. Um, out of character, the person who hired us, he didn't happen to tell us his name, did he? Because uh, I don't recall Actually, asking. yes, he did. I'm sorry I did not bring it, bring it up. It was 
Declan Ingano. It was on the paperwork. It was, he did tell you his name. Declan Ingano. I asked him if he has anything on record for a Declan in Ghana. Searching. There is a criminal record for Declan in Ghana. Can you elaborate on that record? Please? It is not within my prerogative to state the crime. It is not within my rights to state his crimes. I... I'm going to reinforce that I'm a witch hunter and it's my duty to serve the gods and rid the world of all evil. And if this person is evil, it is my duty to turn him into the proper authorities. Okay, uh, roll a persuasion check. Uh, he goes over his files and says, uh, "It is not within my it is not within my rights to state the crimes of Declan in Ghana." Okay, I'm going to take However, out my little. His Please crimes are listed as civil disputes. I'm going to take out my little crazy necromancy book that tries to bite people and ask him if he knows anyone or anywhere I can go to rid myself of such an evil contraption. You can hear, uh, you can hear Salakas from a mile away. The general stop! He holds out his hands as if to ask for the book. You hand him the book. Yes. He looks over the book, examining it, and his whole tone seems to change. He says, "You came here at the wrong. You came to the wrong church to dispose of such a thing." You may not believe me, but such a thing may be disposed of most efficiently by beings of entropic failure. Aberrations of the highest degree could ex expedite this tome's decay. Thank you for the help, Father. I'm going to go and just, I guess, light a candle and place it on some spot where candles are placed. He said, and he drifts back to his normal state and says, thank you for your time. And he goes back to prank. I guess I'm going to head back to the Dragonborn Diner, I guess, and and wait for everybody else. So yeah, whatever. you guys reconvene at the Dragonborn Diner. I, I wasn't done talking to the lady. Oh, sure. Uh, we'll let slip back to you. And what do you say to her now? Um, uh, I don't know if this is metagaming. But you, you tell me. You, you tell me. I want to ask her about um, uh, Declan, but like in a, in a sneaky way. Like, I just want to be like, I'm, I'm considering... I'm considering going into business with someone uh, because they 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 brought up a really good deal on paper, you know. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure how it will work in practice. Does Leviathan have anything on on a guy named Declan in Gano? Um, hold, please, sir. I mean, I guess it wasn't a complete lie. There, there wasn't even a lie. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So I'm sorry to say we don't have any records on a Declan Ingano in specifically. He doesn't appear to have done any work for Leviathan recently. Uh, he does have a he does have a file in the legal 
system, though. Am I... Can Are you allowed to give that information? I'm afraid I'm not. So what you're saying is not to go into business with this guy at all? Oh, I'm not saying not to go into business with him. He, uh... So the charges weren't that serious? I can tell you this. I'm looking at his file. He didn't do any jail time. And it seemed to have been settled out of court. For the most hmm. part. For the most part. I mean, there's a few different charges on his file here. I can't tell you the specifics. Uh, I'm not his lawyer or a member of it, part of his estate. Uh, ooh. Can I... Oh, man. Um... I'm trying. I'm trying to to eke out a persuasion check here. Um, Roll a persuasion check. Yeah. Oh, that's fuck. That's a twelve. Look, hmm. I'll tell you this. I mean. Yeah. If someone were to misplace 200 credits, I could maybe misplace some of these documents. 200. 200 or 400? 200. 200. 200. That's a two double O. Hmm. I calculated that based on how low below the DC you rolled. Jesus Christ, was it 14? No, it was... Uh, I rolled something and then multiplied it by the number below the thing you rolled. Oh, fine. Okay. Um, oh, you just raised my premiums. I can't... You know I can't do that. Mm, then I'm afraid this file is not going to get misplaced. Then don't misplace it. It's fine. Well, is there anything else I can help you with today? You know, now that we're on the topic of misplacing files for a price, um, is, can, can you tell me if there are any actual... This is for me. Like, are there any pre-cataclysm ruins around in in our sector? Oh, uh, you look at your map and says, absolutely. Let me actually put you on all on the map of the Tecrian re of this region. There's the Iron Forest, the Starless Port, and the Screaming City as prominent cityscapes in your region. Quite a bit, actually. Are you telling me there's one in, in the Iron Forest? The entirety of the Iron Forest, the Screaming City, and the Starless Port are pre-cataclysm ruins. Oh. They're literally whole cities that are ruins. Hmm. The Everything that's colored blue is a pre-cataclysm ruin. All right. Then I guess the question has to be a bit more specific. Um, are there any are there any ruins of a pre cataclysm ship? Several specific. dozen in the Starless Port that are completely beyond repair. And this these aren't. Uh, this is out of character. These aren't any of the. Uh, are are any of these the ones that Declan was talking about? No, these are, these are like. To be a bit, little more clear, Declan is looking for a small scale ship. 
not a large scale like super carrier or something that would have been stranded out there. All right, I guess I'll just. That's thanks for the information. I guess I'll um. I'll look over, to I'll look over the maps that you sent over. Uh, thank uh, you, and new... if you, uh, yeah. thank you for your time. And remember, contact Leviathan for any of your shipping needs, and that your premium and that your guild dues will be due at the end of the month. Twenty gold credits. Twenty gold credits to you too. It went from fifteen to twenty in the course of this conversation. <laughs> oh, shit. This is this is a nightmare day for you. Why did it go up by five? Oh, because of the fucking shed. Fuck the the yard. <laughs> because I they're thought... awful. <laughs> they have no respect I, for you. I thought the yard was supposed to, like, was on the... Whatever. Whatever. Um, but fine. They have things on Declan. I don't want to pay 300 bucks. So I'm just gonna... Um... That's cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave. I'm, I, I'm gonna hang up. I'm gonna say goodbye and hang up. So, you head back to the Dragonborn Diner. You all meet up at the Dragonborn Diner and share what you've learned. Let me see. I learned nothing. I disappoint you. <laughs> well, you didn't learn nothing. You know that the administrative buildings in uh, the Star in the uh, region were in the Screaming City. Well, yeah, we can kind of look up um, information on this guy over there. They must have like a little bit more info on Declan and Ghana, if there is one in the area. Uh, so what do you share uh, with each other? I have... I share uh, what I learned. Yeah, I have the maps. And basically, it is the map that I show you just a minute here ago. Can I oh, so um, use a history check on that map to see if I can get a little bit more information on it? Sure. Uh, okay, let me... God damn it. I forgot to ask about Nell's. Oh, I, 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 but I forgot. I completely forgot to ask about Nell's and Gano. Nell's Serecus. Right. It's in Gano, was the name of those right in front of me. Serecus, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to call them back because they're gonna fucking raise my premiums again. <laughs> Every time you bother them, it's gonna happen. It's so evil. Um. Hey, uh, you're looking over like the old city plans. You're like looking at the satellite photos, and you've like you're looking them over, and you're like. Shuffling between these different maps and like the geothermal maps, and you kind of figure it out how like the region has shifted over the years, and you think you got a pretty good idea of where there could be an administrative building in the screaming city. Like, if there's records from before the cataclysm, there's obviously going to be if there are records from before, before the cataclysm. It's got to be in some sort of administrative building, right? And you're, like, able to figure out where a few of them could have been. Perfect. Like, literally, it's been 2,000 years, so you can't be sure, but it's like... You got a pretty good idea of what it might be like nowadays. So I'm going to share that with, um... Salakas. Pointing it out on the map and telling him, "Hey, but I kind of can't. I kind of think it's around this area, the administrative yeah, building yeah, yeah. that Sharktooth was talking to me about." Right. Um. I, I, I didn't get anything from the Leviathan, like except these maps. But that's pretty uh, helpful. 
I say that I didn't get anything about Serechus, but I did find out Declan Agana had some sort of civil dispute, but as for the specifics of it, I wasn't able to get that information. I also I also inquired about Declan. Um, apparently it wasn't that bad. They I you know, the lady on the phone tried to bribe did she try to, no, I she wanted me to bribe she she asked for money in in you know for for the for files on Declan, but there were three hundred gold and I was, you know I'm not gonna three hundred gold's too much. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Yeah, we haven't really. That's what we would get if we failed this mission. <laughs> and survive. Yeah. Okay. Did so, we find anything out from the scrapyard people? I don't think we went to the scrapyard. Right, yeah, we haven't gone to the vehicle place. Oh, you have not asked old uh, Jericho Willis about it yet. He runs the vehicle shop and the stables. I think we could check that one out together. Yeah. So, you guys... Head outward from the Dragonborn Diner to the uh, vehicle shop. And you see a dark-skinned man with a long beard, uh, braided hair, sitting there with a really messed up looking, kind of turtle looking, kind of alien dog thing. And uh, you see that this vehicle... Garage has like a few dozen vehicles, uh, trucks, motorcycles, but also like giant desert lizards. And he, he's like rocking back and forth on a rocking chair. And he sees you guys approach. He says, Hey, Sal. His name's Jericho, right? Yeah, Jericho, Jericho. Willis. What's up, Jericho? Not much. That old dog of yours doing okay? I mean, he did get hit by a sword recently, but, you know, we made it out. Ah, hell, why uh, didn't you come and see me, Sal? Because, uh, like, it was that my, my store was broken into. And your and, dog uh, got stabbed and you didn't come and bring our come over here, our come here boy. Come on, get you in this shop. Oh. Y'all come on in. He picks up our it's like, yeah, Sal, you gotta come to me when the dog is stabbed. I didn't know that. Um You know I'm the only one here about that knows how to fix an animal. They got no <laughs> Well, he's got an infection. God, Sal. And he breaks uh, our over the workshop. It's like, oh, you all three come in. We can have a little chat when we... And he's like, got well, he was our under a table. doing that really weird dog talk. I just went over to the motorcycles, looked at him, shrugged my shoulders, and went, hey. They're and all back. much worse than your motorcycle. These are all like scrapper motorcycles, scrapper trucks. And, like uh, thrift shop mopeds? Uh, pretty much. And uh, he's got Art on a table, and he's giving Art the once-over. And uh, he's uh, and he's like uh, testing him and like looking him over. It's like, so what you three coming to my shop here for today? A little music baby and a witch hunter and a storekeeper that shouldn't be minding his store. So we got to keep the local businesses alive. Yeah. I remember why I don't come here often. I think to myself. <laughs> um, God. Um, I'm out. <laughs> what? What? Um, so what are you three doing here? He's asking. Oh, do you know anything about scraps in the area? I know all about scrapping in the area. I've done scrapped out there for 
40 years. I was here when Blue Harbor was founded, after all. I found it was one out here and helped found the city, scrapping all day, all day. I'm retired from that life now. Did you ever hear of a ship that no one... That might have been on some sort of ledger, but no one has found yet? Hmm. Uh, people come in here claiming about ships all the time, asking me, Hey, you seen this ship? Okay. Uh, the, this is to, to Irk. Did the contract have any sort of ship name? No, it did, did not. Okay. But uh, It was a pre-cataclysm ship, right? Now, those are exceptionally yeah. rare pre-cataclysm ships. But the few have been found in the areas. The people who find them don't like to talk about them. Because, uh... Has there been a particular area that you know have been some scraps that you can tell are from that period? The most untouched place here is the Screaming City. Mm, so the screaming city Sounds like fun. It's not. We're on our way there anyway. Why? The Can Screamers. All manner of screaming, gnarly beasts live there. Not to mention the Scrap Titan. Uh, the Rust Titan, I'm sorry to say. Half the screaming you hear in that city is the buildings falling apart from the Rust Titan. Yeah, sounds a little dangerous. If you're so much as get within five feet of that thing, your uh, gear starts to disintegrate. It doesn't matter if it's magical or not. This so thing. would you say that that Rust Titan is evil? Uh, no, it's just eating metal. Do you know where we could find something that can possibly hold us up against it? Just give it a wide berth. You'll see it for miles. Only fools go after the Rust Titan. Trust me, you'll know it when you see it. Do we, we, do we really have to? Like, exactly. We're just going to the city. Oh, yeah. But, uh, what you looking for there? From what I remember, it was a building. Uh, a public records I mean, building? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you go in data fishing in a public records building. Yep. By the way, also, um, have you ever heard of uh, Nel Serekis? Uh He goes over. Uh, at, he uh, feeds Art a little health potion, uh, a little health potion of some sort, and Art's scars completely heal, and he looks brand good as new. He clean. He's like uh, combing out Art's hair, and he out, out, out Art's fur. He goes over to a box on the wall, and he says. I did a lot of data fishing back in the day. I actually heard that. I actually think I saw that name once. On a census record. From how long ago? That was pre-cataclysm. So a little over, shy over 2,000 years ago when that would have been on the record. But that was 35 years ago that I saw that. But uh, if you can get into a census building, into an administrative building, you could maybe... Uh, Find that census data again. I don't know. Um, do you remember where the census buildings are? Uh, you got a map? Yeah. Uh, he marks yeah, a few uh, few places on the map. It's like these are administrative buildings, city work stuff. And he opens up a box and he hands up, pulls out a card, and he says, uh, "This one got me into one of them. The city worker card of some sort." Take it. Ah, ah, ah. What are you going to say, Sal? You're going to say please? You're going to say thank you, Jericho? I was once I had it, but, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to just thank you, Jericho. Dang, dang millennials got no respect. They think just because they born so close to turn millennial that they... What's a millennial? The year is 1998. It's anybody who was born in the last 20 years... In world, that's the year it is. He hands you the car. Like, I am thirty. I'm not a millennial. He says, "Damn millennials, driving me crazy." I died time. 
Mom, that pen's dead too, Mom. Get, get out. Mom, I'm streaming. Get out of my room, I'm playing Minecraft. Uh, um, he hands you the card, he's like, uh, and Ark's good to go. And I ain't gonna even charge you a penny for fixing your dog. Thank you. Just don't let, don't break him again. Don't go swinging swords around the dog. Okay, you promise, Sam? Yeah. I might regret this, but... Promise him, Sal. You know, but before, before... Yeah, promise him, Sal. Promise before, me. I promise. Okay, don't break your dog. Before he got he before he got hit by a sword, he was flying through the air. Why was your dog flying through the air? And I just I just bolt. <laughs> Sam, you, know. you can't let your dog fly. He doesn't even have a license. As you're bolting out of there, you hear his voice. <laughs> this guy is, if you can't tell, Jericho Willis. Uh. Overly cares too much, but not in the good way. <laughs> yeah. It kind of reminds me of the guy that Obi-Wan went to to find out where that dart came from in Return of the Clone. Or <laughs> the, 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 clone. War. <laughs> the clone one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had stupid English for a second. Yeah. I know exactly the character you're talking about is Dexter Jetster. Uh, yep, him. And don't even ask. Don't give me Star. Star Wars is a banned topic on the list. And no. Okay, sorry. And the table rules is a banned topic. Okay, for a reason. Okay, what do you guys do now? I guess we know where we're going in the sleeping city. I mean, in the sleep. What it was, screaming city. Yes, screaming um, city. Uh, so, is there anything else we have to do here? I don't know. Is there... I don't think so. Um, okay. okay, so can Just someone kinda... refresh my memory? This is me as the player uh, talking because I wasn't. I forgot to take notes during the whole entire Declan meeting. Um, why do we need the information on Nelson Rekis? Try to to try and figure out. Where the guy left, with the hopes that you could figure out where he was keeping his ship. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the administrative building can help us in that aspect. Yeah. Okay. And we know, and we know where it is, and we have the key card, which I should add to my inventory. And I and I think um, your buddy Jericho also told us that that's one of the most like unscrapped. <laughs> areas um the screaming city so there's a possibility that that's what, where we might find stuff yeah i'm no no way i'm taking my motorcycle down there with a the chance of it getting all rusty i have i have a truck but i also have a scrapyard full of we have a mechanic next to the scrapyard too you want to try um, for that I I think I have some favor with the mechanics because I uh, I let them root through the scrapyard every once in a while. Um, I could ask them for, you know, just a bucket of bolts, truck, or a car. It's for you know just to for free rain through the scrapyard for like a day or something. I don't know. I mean, it's your guys' choice. Do you want to bum a vehicle off the mechanics, or do you want to uh, just head to the... Remember, you literally can see the uh, Rust Titan for a mile. And it's only a problem when you get within five feet of it. Oh. So so if I take my truck only into the city, he won't be a problem unless he's five feet away? Yeah. Okay. Then okay, case, I didn't... I, know. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I uh, think we can take the truck. And you can take the cycle easily. Let me put it this way. Uh, the, the Rust Titan is purely flavor, and I will not put you guys up to a creature with a with a, <laughs> with a challenge rating of 30 that can melt uh, that can yeah. melt steel with its breath, okay? 
I'm not that evil. I'm pretty evil, but I'm not that evil. Okay, then. Uh, then yeah, I'll just. Well, just, we could we could just take the truck. Sure, we can. I'll take my motorcycle. Okay. Uh, I, was, I was a little reluctant at first because the truck is my official business vehicle, and I do not need Leviathan raising my premiums again just because I got a little paint scratched off the goddamn truck. <laughs> What the heck? What do you guys see on screen right now? A desert. Brown <laughs> and three white circles. Yeah. This should not have been. Okay. A third circle should not be visible. Okay, place yourselves on the bigger circle, which is the truck. Okay. How do I do that? Uh, you grab your character by the name. And uh, you grab your character by the name. And you drag them onto the screen. Oh! oh okay. Wait. Uh, oh, right here. Okay. So we're on the truck. Yeah, and Which one way? of you is on the cycle. Which way is it driving? Oh, are you going to take your motorcycle? That's what I said. I was going to do my motorcycle. It is driving from uh, that away. Okay, so I'm, I'm over here. I'm in the front seat. Okay, uh... You're on your motorcycle. Zooming, I'm zooming beside him, and I'm doing wheelies and stuff every once in a while. It's completely ridiculous. Um, so you guys are cruising through the desert, cruising through the Hold desert. On. Someone's missing here. Yeah, we're sorry. Yeah. Oh. Right oh boy. He's right, right there behind. Right, by, right uh, there beside me. And that's when your path is blocked. Art Art has the passenger has the passenger seat, and Parnassus is in the back. Literally, I'm in the bag and I'm playing in my. Playing my uh, you guys see a playing, large um turn. What is that road song? On the road again. Life is a highway. <laughs> you guys see something walking along the road, blocking your pathway. And uh, I'm gonna color this something, and there we go. That should do it. Man, this is doing a poor job of updating certain things for the viewer. Uh, I don't know why that doesn't show up for the players. What the heck is going on? Because uh, I'm seeing it from the player. Player screen here. One second. Uh, anyways, something approaches. Uh, it's a giant, what looks like a giant dung beetle, uh, pushing a ball of scrap, and uh, it catches a uh, whiff of you. And uh, it decides it's going to throw its ball of scrap at your truck. Oh, boy. Uh, so you have to make a vehicle proficiency check to see if you can dodge it. And then both of you need to make dexterity saving throws in the truck. So, dexterity... How do... Okay, you want me to just roll a d20 for the first one? Uh, yeah, uh... You have vehicle profi uh do you have vehicle proficiency? I don't think so. Uh nope, just forgery kit. So roll a D twenty plus nothing. Just a D twenty. We'll see if you're able to dodge out of the way. And uh the two of you both have to make dexterity oh no. my god. The both of you have to make dexterity saving throws on the truck now. 
I have I have the three D dice thing enabled on my screen, and the thing balanced on the eleven for so long before it flopped over to four. Uh, so to make a saving throw, you find the saving throws panel. And you just click dexterity. Yeah. Saving throws coming. Oh. 14. 14. Uh, you succeed. Nice. <laughs> and, and you succeed. So you both take half damage. Crap. Um, you both take three damage and uh, roll initiative. There's a giant dung beetle that's pushing a scrap ball around. Pushing scrap balls around. Everybody roll initiative. You said we take three damage? Mm-hmm. All right. Now remember, oh. when you roll initiative, you have to select your token first. Did I do that? Or nope. did I just... No. Okay. Okay, so I... I just click on it, right? Yep. Sales got it. Okay, and we were supposed to throw initiative, right? Guys, I might die. Just how, just, just based on how this started, I might die. No, don't worry, you're fine. Parnassus. There's a big old bugger. There's a big giant dung beetle. It's covered in like scrap. It looks like it's like. Oh. Attached scrap to itself, and it's pushing a big ball of scrap, and it just threw that ball at you. And it's like gathering up another ball real quick. And you do Parnassus. By the way, you all have all of your spell slots. It's been a day, you all had a rest, you have all your spell slots, you have everything you need. So you're all in top form, except for you're both down three hit points. Oh my god, and the scrap is heading right towards me, right? It's already hit you. Yes. <laughs> At this point. Um... You took three damage. Oh, shoot. Um... You have to make the choice here. There's a big old bug. I'm gonna stealth it. I'm gonna try to avoid it again. You're gonna just hide in the back seat of the truck? No, I'm gonna grab the wheel because I have bravery too. Uh, I'm not sure what you should roll for this. Are you go. gonna try to grab the wheel? Yeah, and maneuver away from it. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I guess roll a contested athletics check against Parnassus sale? I mean, I'm not. I don't. I think you're I'm not, I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know. I'm just gonna. Okay, let you're them gonna let them do it. Yeah, just take the wheel. I'm gonna fucking bolt this shit. So you're able to like get past it this far. Um, I guess that's your action to maneuver the truck. Sailcast. Yeah. This thing is. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy. So you would. I'm gonna go into the back. Because uh, Parnassus is, is driving right now. Okay. So that thing's 10 feet away? Yeah. Great. Um, Firebolt? That hits? I'm not going to do Firebolt. Oh, that was, a, that was an accident. That's okay. Uh, roll what you're actually going to roll. Oh, God, I guess. Yep, I'm going to do Aldrich Blast. Uh, that's a hit. You blast Great. some of the scrap off its back, and it looks pretty... Uh, uh, roll the damage. Let's see how much it took. Oh, boy. Five. Hey, five is five. Five damage is five damage. You blast some of the scrap off its back. Uh, it looks pretty angry at that. 
So it's going to run up and it's going to try to bite you. You're going to have half cover on this, so that's, uh, I believe, plus two to AC. I don't know cover rules super well. It's going to try to bite you. Uh, and it misses. Wow. Lucky it missed, too. Ben and Dante. Oh, you can definitely reach it. I'm going to move up 20, 25 feet, however many it is, right next to it. And then smash it with me more hammer. Probably a good move. That's a hit. Roll damage. Awesome. That's a lot of damage. You can see that this thing, not super durable. And I swing my arm a couple of times before whacking it on the on the head. Parnassus. What do you do to help this what do you do to help this situation? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try to use um, vicious mockery. Now, does vicious mockery work? Um, one second, I have to check vicious mockery. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, you're going to use vicious mockery? Uh, it's yeah. got to roll a save. Could you go ahead and roll that damage? Um, do I just click on the spells? Yeah. Okay. Or you click it on your... Okay, so... Uh, what do you say to hurt this beetle's feelings? It fails its wisdom save. I basically maneuver across, after maneuvering around it, I tell it that its legs are too short. And, then, and, it's, and that I have seen other beetles grab things better than them. Okay. So now it's your turn. Art is going to move on your turn and do stuff on your turn. This is an independent creature. And uh, Art's feeling brave since he can fly and do whatever he wa he thinks he can fly. And he can do whatever he wants. And he's going to try to bite its pincer. And he hits. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, and he does one damage. One. Okay. He bit it. He drew blood with his little bitey mouth. Slackus, uh, your turn. Uh, let me see here. Da, 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 da. 2d8 plus 1d6 damage. Uh, you are in close range, so it yeah. would be at disadvantage from where you're at. But Thunder Wave would not. I'm, I'm not looking at Thunder Wave. I don't even think... I don't have Thunder Wave. Are you sure? I oh, you have Magic it. Missile. Um, I was... I'm going to do Chaos Bolt. Okay. Chaos Bolt will be disadvantaged at this range because you're at close range. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. I'm going to roll disadvantage. Oh, they both eleven. Hey, that hits. This isn't. This isn't a strong. Uh, this isn't a tough boy. Uh, so which damage do you uh, use? It can be uh, if you hover over uh, roll damage. Uh, okay, so that can be uh, thunder or acid. I'm gonna do thunder damage. Okay, a loud crack boom. Uh, and this thing takes a shockingly large uh, amount of damage from that. and lo looks like it's dying almost, but uh, roll for uh, magic, wild magic. Wild magic, wild magic, come on. Give me wild magic, give me something good. Let's roll, it's just a d20. You haven't, uh, it's just oh, a... right, right, right. 
Uh, your save right. Uh, one or it's one or two, right? If it's one or two. Did I get a nat? I got a fucking nat twenty. Now of all times. Hey, it's one, two, or three now. So make sure you tick that up on your surge threshold. Nice. Uh. But the scrap beetle uh didn't like that. He didn't like it all. He's gonna try to bite you, Sal. Uh, and that's a twenty do. Twenty two to hit, and it you do it does five damage on you. I'm fucking down. Oh uh, yeah, you're down. Uh, holy shit! You first person knocked out in the party, guys. I fucking said so. I I said it. I knew it. Ben and Dante, he's down. Can I use healing word on I'm gonna smash. On your turn, you can. Yes. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna try to save you. That's a hit. <laughs> that's 10 damage. This thing is on its last legs. Are you goddamn serious? Yeah. Uh, it's not down yet, Parnassus. I'm gonna try to save I would, it. So. I would, don't attack no. it. Okay. Healing word is a bonus action. Oh, okay. Then. You can use healing word and then vicious and do anything you want for your main action. Okay, cool. Except for a spell. Uh, okay, I will try. I will use healing word. It can be a cantrip, though. It can be a cantrip. It can be a cantrip or any kind of attack. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, I... roll for healing work. Okay. Uh, you're back up at full health, Sam. Yes. <laughs> It's like you've never been hurt before. Just What's... taking a short little dirt nap is all. Uh, roll. Uh, you gonna do vicious mockery or a rapier attack on it, Parnassus? Basically, I basically got a concussion. I'm gonna try rapier attack. He says that, right? The whole, like, it's gonna get away for worse. And then he, he talks about uh, this kid that killed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just bounces off the armor. Uh, Salakas, yeah. you're up. All right. Um, so I, I, I need to learn to pronounce your name properly. Um, uh, how many have... Hmm. You guys have been hitting it pretty consistently. Oh, I only have one. Okay, I only have... I have one slot left. So I'm just gonna... Chaos Bolt again. Okay. Uh, disadvantage, but uh, let's see what happens. Fuck, I'll use Magic Missile then. Uh... Go ahead and roll for your magic missile, and then roll for a wild. Ma uh, roll to see if you get a wild magic surge. Uh, this doesn't do the magic missile thing. You have uh, to hit it three times. Three separate gonna... times. Uh, yeah, because that rolled a one d four, so that's two damage. That uh, that just rolls damage straight up. So it's one d four. So you've already dealt three damage to it. You can see what dice are being rolled when you hover over it. So we'll just hit it two more times. Hit that thing two more times. I was, I was just going to do all three at once, but okay, I'll just click it twice. Uh, the reason it works that way is so when you... Uh, your magic know. missiles dance through this creature, tearing it to shreds. Dent, I damage it for ten. Yeah. And you cut it to shreds with your magic missile. Uh, roll to see if you hit it. Get another. Roll one more time. One more d20. To see if you hit a magic wild magic surge. Give me a beard of butterflies. I got a seventeen. Uh, it's one through four now. But you ma uh you managed to defeat the scrap beetle. You did it! Yeah. Right. Can you choose to do a magic search? No, can I? I 
I don't know. I wanted to kill it with flavor, but... Uh, yeah, whatever. you can describe how you kill it. I know, so, it can, sometimes it's, it's rough to tell when a player wants to kill something with flavor and when it doesn't. I'm not super well, good it, at gauging it. Killed, it killed me first, and then I got the killing blow on it. I really want to kill this thing with flavor. I so want to hear it. Basically, what happened was um, this thing bit me, and I basically just bit it. I was like halfway down to the floor when uh, Parnassus does the healing word. Um, and just like almost like halfway to the ground, I spring right back up in time for uh, Benadotti to plunge this thing into the sky. And I just like shoot three magic missiles right at right at its right at all of its legs, just and it's just dead. It's just a, a dome on the floor right now. I love that flavor. Don't be shy about asking me about doing stuff like that too. I love that kind of stuff. Can I collect some of the scrap that it? Has? Oh yeah. Awesome. This thing's got all sorts of nice scrap on it. As a matter of fact, like. Maybe 20 or 30 gold worth of scrap somewhere in that area. But it's also got some weird stuff on it. Can I do a perception oh, yeah. on the weird stuff? Uh, just roll me a d100, everybody, for the weird thing you find. Okay. Okay, so we all click d100? Yep. I have a 15 in it. <laughs> Your magic wild threshold is up. Wild magic threshold is up to four. That's scary. Okay, so what did each this of you thing, get? Let me see. Hold on. Sal, uh, Sal got a fifteen. Uh. Yeah, I got a fifteen. Okay, one second. Uh, dude. 15, uh. You got a lit lantern that has a green light in it. Nope. And it's on lit right now. Yeah, what? Yeah. On the, what was it on the, on the darkest day, on the blackest night? No, no evil, evil shall escape my sight. Night. Hell yeah, um, uh. Ben and Dante, uh, you find. Yep. Let's see, what did, number did you roll? 86. 86. Uh, I have so much shit in my inventory. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I think it's funny that you have so much shit in your inventory. Because I'm, I'm evil. This is a green light lantern. <laughs> green lantern. Six. A power cell. Uh, you find a faceless doll. So a faceless doll. A faceless I mean, I doll. Had, I already had a flashlight in my inventory. Like I didn't need this. Uh, but I'll give you this. Uh, and when you inspect it, open it up. And you open it up. There's an, this thing is powered by an Arcanium crystal, which is... It, so I got... The doll or the light? The light. Okay. Rory rolled a 6 on D100. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I saw someone roll a 100 two weeks ago. <laughs> That's being special. Okay, uh, roll again, because everything that you rolled for sucked. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> wait, no? Oh, shit, sorry. Uh, yeah, everything you rolled for sucked. Uh, <laughs> roll again, uh, 42? Yeah. Let's see if you can get something that doesn't suck this time. Uh... <laughs> Let's see, uh... Wow, these all suck. 
Oh my god. Okay, I'm just going to go with your original roll six. Uh, you find a black metal cylinder, and it's got a button on the top. What? You find a black metal cylinder, and it's got a button on the top. Ooh, can I, like, investigate it? It's a... Yeah, roll investigation check. Oh, okay. It's got a black metal cylinder with a button on the top, and the button is red. Push it, push it, push it. Hold it away from you. Uh, can I... How how heavy is it? Yeah. It's not very heavy. Can I mage hand it at a safe distance? Yes. Cool. Yeah, let's I do, do that. that. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. What if it's, what if it's a single-use bomb? Can we insight it? Exactly. Can... <laughs> can... can you, know what you don't is. know anything about this thing. Can Parnassus cast Identify on it? No, because uh, Parnassus does not have a 100 gold piece pearl for which to cast Identify. Shit, can I history it? Check if I know some lore about it? Yeah. I love pulling this shit. Uh, it's just a black metal cylinder with a bright red button on top. <laughs> Oh, man, this is the worst. Okay. We can... What? We can, like, safety pin it, you know? Yeah, let's just... When we really need it, um... Yeah. We can... Throw it at a... Throw it at a boss or something to see if it... If it blows up. Yeah. You know, in the, in the, in the chance that it could blow up. Yeah. We can definitely try something like that. Or, you know, like... Are you sure you want to waste an action on something that might not be a bomb? Yes. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I am willing to waste the action. Hmm. I don't know. But I don't you know want, if you can, you, you want to test it right fast. now? Yeah, exactly. Fine. I'll just mage hand it far away. Uh, and when you press the button, you hear... I bring it. In, I bring it in very slowly. The dragon turtle is a creature native to the oceans of the Great Ring and the Dracon uh, Draconis system. The dragon turtle is. This dragon turtle's name is Herman. He was brought here as a gift by the Draconian ambassadors. Say hello to Herman. Did you find, like, a data packet or something? Herman eats over 200 pounds of fish a day. And he is very loving. Remember to sign up for feedings for Herman. Now, first come, first serve. Yeah, this is, uh, hold on, what was it called? Let me, see. hold on. And then proceeds to rattle off a bunch of fucking information about dragon turtles. I kind of like love this yeah, box. Is it a is it a data packet? It's a cylinder. Is it like a data cylinder? That's like clearly meant for like an information booth at a zoo for a dragon turtle named Herman. I'm a little I'm a I'm a little disappointed that you didn't let us throw this at a boss. <laughs> It would have been the fucking funniest thing that ever happened. Exactly. And uh, I didn't let that happen. <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed in myself. Of it. Well, I didn't want... When you're fighting a boss, I didn't want you guys to get mad at me, is the thing. No, it's okay. It would have been funny. Yeah, it would have been funny. I'm sorry about that. At any rate, uh, I think that is where we will probably wrap up this session tonight. How's that sound to you guys? Well, did Sounds anything? good to me. Do, we, uh, do we all of us want to open up our like scraps before we part? Uh, the scrap? Uh, what do you mean? The stuff that we found. Like, well, one of you found a dragon turtle, a, a data pad, a data rod on dragon turtles. 
One of you. I'm just gonna leave my doll laying in on the ground next to the carcass of the beetle. <laughs> Can I take the doll? Uh, roll just a wisdom a saving throw, Ben and Dante. By the way. A what wisdom saving throw? Yes, roll a wisdom saving throw. Did I do that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, nothing happens. I think you have your your character sheet set to advantage. Uh, he does. I'm gonna have to fix that later. Um, do any of you take the pick the doll back up? I I want to just to throw it in the back of the truck because it's interesting, and I could sell it. Okay, roll a wisdom saving throw when you throw it in the back of the truck. I'm gonna get stuck in this doll. <laughs> I'm gonna be riding on the back with it, okay? <laughs> uh, wisdom, wisdom saving. Yeah. Be cursed um, or something. Okay. If you ever part with it, you're gonna get a disease or something. Oh God, I gotta tell. Oh, what a nice doll! What a beautiful doll! This doll is fantastic. Yeah. I, I saved. Is that a save? No. I oh, I didn't say. Okay. Uh, no, this doll is fantastic. What are you out. talking about? The doll is great. You're going to get it new clothes. You're going to clean it up. You love this doll. Oh, God. Okay. This is the greatest doll in the world. Why would you throw it in the freaking back seat? It should have its own seat, after all. Put it like put it in the... Don't throw it in the back. Throw it in the put in the back seat and buckle it oh, up. No, so it's the doll is going to take place, the place of art. I want Parnassus to just be holding the little like Herman. That's yeah, little. like why would why would I <laughs> put it in the back? Like, why would I why would I put it in the back seat when there's when I could just have it with me? Yeah, in, keep it with you seat. and like yeah. hold it and take care of it. You I need it, to take care of it. I put it in in a in my uh, I put it in the pocket of my jumpsuit. Yeah, uh, yeah, you like uh, have this doll hanging out with you now. Great, and it's the greatest doll ever. It has no face, so it can be anybody. Keep the doll safe. When do I get to do another wisdom saving throw? <laughs> no, uh, nope. <laughs> and that's where I think that's where we will actually wrap up the session tonight. With uh, Selakis acquiring the doll. And uh, uh, I think that's where we're going to stop the stream. So uh, anybody who stopped by or swept on through, thank you for... Anybody who just like caught a glimpse even, thank you for attending. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll do this again someday. Thanks. Thank you. How do I stop stream? How? how do, there's...